Tonight's game is brought to you by Light Beer. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Mobile Detergent Gasoline. Mobile washes dirt away before it accumulates to help you maintain your car's performance. And by your local Toyota dealer, where now is the time to cook up a deal. And by Levi's Action Slags. The easy to wear, easy to care for slags from Levi's Menswear. Hi, everybody, from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. I'm Ron Harrison, along with Jim Gallagher, and today, the University of Miami Hurricanes taking on the University of Florida Gators, and what a football game this promises to be. The season opener for both these two teams, the 43rd meeting between them. The University of Florida holds a two-game age, 22 to 20, but that's not the important thing here today. The intensity level here at the Orange Bowl is phenomenal. What a season opener for these two teams, and Jim, perhaps you'll tell us why this game is so important. Well, it's very important to both universities because basically they compete in recruiting for the same talent. So they'll be playing for bragging rights this afternoon and winning many times determines what school a student will go to. So that's why it's important as far as that's concerned. As far as Miami's program is concerned, it's not the culmination of what Howard Snellenberger hopes to do, but filling this Orange Bowl was one of his important goals, and he put a winning team on the field last year. He's filling this Orange Bowl this afternoon and playing a great game with a state rival. And of course, you remember last year's game in Gainesville. Yes, indeed I do. 76,000 plus here today at the Orange Bowl. Last year, you'll recall, final game up in Gainesville, one second to go, 28 to 7 the score. Schnellenberger kicks a field goal, makes it 31 to 7. That has set the stage for a tremendous grudge match here today at the Orange Bowl. Going to be a sensational football game. Stand by. We'll be right back right after this. Well, here we are at the Orange Bowl. 76,000 plus is the estimated crowd, and I mean to tell you the intensity level here is something else. As the University of Florida and the University of Miami Hurricanes get ready to square off against each other. Jim, did you get the coin toss? The University of Florida Gators won the coin toss they have elected to receive. So All the right. University of Miami Hurricanes will be kicking off, the Gators will be receiving, and we'll be into football action. All right, as you know, as we were talking about on the opening, Miami defeated the Gators last season in Gainesville, 31 to seven. They have defeated the Florida Gators for the past three seasons, and uh, they beat them in 1978, 22 to 21. That was the game that we'll recall so very, very vividly, Jim. We were behind 21 to nothing when we were doing the University of Miami games, and the University of Miami came back with 22 big points to win it. In 79, the University of Miami won 30-24, and of course, last year's controversial ending, 31 to seven, Howard Schnell and the University of Miami players pelted by the fans in Florida in Gainesville just hit with oranges and all kinds of debris from the stands. Schnellenberger said we'll teach him a lesson. One second left on the clock. He sent Danny Miller in to kick a field goal and they win it 31 to 7. You take a look back at this tremendous rivalry the 43rd meeting between these two teams. Florida has won 22 of the games. The University of Miami has won 20. There have been some great, great uh, moments in this rivalry. Of course, the 1971 Gator flop when uh, John Reeves was a quarterback for the Gators at that time, seeking an NCAA passing record and a clock running out. Uh, the University of Miami Hurricane had the ball. And uh, there's Coach Howard Schnellenberger, and he is excited. At any rate, the uh, University of Miami had the ball, and the Gators laid down on the goal line, let the Canes score so they could get Reeves back into the game to win the NCAA passing record, which he did. All right, that, of course, has always had the University of Miami Hurricanes very upset, and uh, this thing has got all the rivalry. Here we go. Here's the voice of this game with the play-by-play, -play, Jim Gallagher. Thank you very much, Ron Harrison. Danny Miller, the... Senior kicker from Clewiston will boot away for the University of Miami. It's high and it's deep. Lorenzo Hampton on the three. The five, he's at the 10, cuts outside to the 15-yard line before he is brought down at the 16-yard line by the University of Miami's Thompson. So the Gators will put the football in play. It'll be first and 10 for the University of Florida at the 16-yard line. The ball's going to be spotted down on that near side hash mark. That will give Florida the wide side to the right. You're looking at the replay. All right, he tries to go to the outside. Good play, good pursuit by the University of Miami Hurricanes as they come down and nail him quickly at the 16-yard line. Coach Howard Schnellenberger says he expects him to go with a two-back backfield. If they can't get anything going with the run, he 
looks for him to go with four wide receivers early in the football game. He's at quarterback for the University of Florida. The give-off goes to the tailback. He comes to the near side and is bounced out of bounds after a uh, gain of about three yards on the play. So carrying the football for the University of Florida was James Jones, and Ronnie Lippett made the tackle for the Miami Hurricanes, and the ball will now be between the 18 and the 19-yard line. Second and seven. Gators operating in their own territory. We're just underway with the Florida-Miami game from the Orange Bowl. Slot offense to the left side. Pease is the quarterback in a split backfield behind Pease. Pease throws. Complete out of the flat at the 20. Going to be close to a first down. Rodney Bellinger was the tackle man, and Spencer Jackson made the catch. Number 89. He's a junior from Delray Beach, Florida. And... It was not enough for a first down. It'll be third and one for the Gators. They do a lot of this motion stuff, Ron. They like to throw as they roll out. Pease is a very agile quarterback, 6'2", 217. He's a sophomore from Lakeland and a fine athlete. Miami going with the five-man front. They've got the two linebackers in the gap. The game goes again to Jones, and he stopped behind the line. A big stop by Tony Ciccolo, the nose tackle for the Miami Hurricanes. Great play by Ciccolo as he penetrated very, very quickly and makes a great tackle, a big tackle, and that's going to bring up a fourth down situation now with one to go and put the Gators in an early punting situation. So a very big play by Tony Ciccolo, replacing All-American Jim Burt at the uh, nose guard position. And, of course, as you know, Jim Burt, All-American last year, caught on with the New York Giants this year. The punter is in Joe Borkavich, a senior from Willingsboro, New Jersey, punting for the University of Florida. Kicks away. Fred Marion at the 35-yard line for Miami. Swings outside, cuts across, he's at the 40, and knocked out a hit down at the 45-yard line, and the ball goes out of bounds here on the near side. He fumbled, but it went out of bounds. McAllister made the tackle for the University of Florida Gators. That was a 40-yard punt for Joe Borakavit. Freddie Marion, maybe a little bit of the early game jitters. He had the ball jostled loose right here. Watches he's hit, but he makes a fine return. He's a big 6'3", 195-pound senior from Gainesville, Florida, an All-American candidate, and he is the big man back there in the secondary for the Hurricanes. Jim Kelly at quarterback as the Hurricanes put the football in play from the 46-yard line on their own side of the 50. Kelly dropping the throw. He's got Brodsky here along the near sideline, and it is a completion. Took it right on the sideline at the 37-yard line. Lilly made the stop for the Florida Gators. Larry Brodsky has 63 career receptions going into this game. That put him ninth in UN history. He's one of those guys that he's kind of like Howard Twilley was for the Dolphins some years ago. They said he was slow and small, but he always caught the ball, and that's exactly what Larry Brodsky does. I formation once again for the University of Miami. The give off goes to the fullback, and that is Chris Hobbs, and he's to the 35-yard line as he gets some tough yards. Talking with Howard Schnellenberger before the game, Schnellenberger said they're going to come out. He said, don't look for this to be a dull game. We're going to do everything we can do to put points on the board, and as you see, they went to the air immediately. I might point out that Brodsky and Kelly work out together in the offseason. These two guys knew each other's timing about as well as any two guys can, and uh, they really work well together, and of course, Brodsky, the leading receiver on the Kane squad. Again, the eye. The pitch goes to Smokey Rome, turning outside, and he is at the 30, across the 30. He's got a first down and knocked yes, out of bounds on the far sideline. Fernando Jackson, the strong side linebacker, made the tackle for the Gator defensive unit. A first down for the Hurricanes as they have marched to the 25-yard line. Smokey Rome, last year, he rambled against East Carolina for 249 yards on 33 carries. He has got some speed when he can turn it to the outside and look at him go as he's brought down a first down for the Canes. Good field position on the 25-yard line. It's a first and 10, and the Canes got a break in the early going when they got field position. Mike Rodriguez has gone into the game at wide receiver. All right, now watch Number Rodriguez. Six. He is going to be at wide receiver. I would not be surprised to see him on a reverse play throw the ball. They have talked about that. First and 10 for the Canes at the 25. The give goes to Rome, and he has hit and brought down at the line of scrimmage. 
Florida defensive unit diagnosed that very well. Just uh, filling in a little bit more on Rodrigue for those that are watching on the USA Network that are not familiar with the University of Miami Hurricanes. Rodrigue was their starting quarterback two years ago and got beaten out by Jim Kelly. They said he's too good of an athlete to uh, have him off the team. They moved him over to wide receiver. He's been backing up on both sides, both on the flanker and the wide receiver slot. Second and ten for the Canes at the 25-yard line of the Gators. Kelly throws, and it's incomplete. Intended for Cooper out in the flat, but it falls as incomplete. Marshall, Wilbur Marshall made a great knockdown on this. Now watch the play, number 88. Watch him get in and get a hand up. Here it comes right here. Number 88, Wilbur Marshall blocks the pass. Good play by Marshall. Cooper was right there in the clear. So the ball remains at the 25. It'll be third and 10, 12 minutes to play in the first quarter. Still no score in the football game at the Orange Bowl. Kelly sends Belk to the left and Brodsky to the right. A split backfield on third down, dropping the throw. Strong arm quarterback, and he throws long, and it is out of bounds here on the near side. It was intended for Mark Rush coming out of the backfield. And so that brings up a fourth down. Good pressure on Kelly that time at the University of Florida Gators. They really put the pressure on him here, and he just lobbed the ball up. I don't think he thought his receiver really had a chance. He just got rid of it and threw it out of bounds. It's a high lob-type pass. You can see he didn't really think Rush had a shot at it, but he very wisely threw it out of bounds, didn't take a chance on an interception, and in comes Danny Miller, the tremendous field goal kicker for the University of Miami. This kid can do it all. He Kick was in a slump last year, but uh, they say he's red hot this year in preseason. Kick will come from the 32. LaBelle will hold. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. His foot is into it. And it is good. Miami has drawn first blood here in the Orange Bowl and jumped out of the front of the Florida Gators by a score of three to nothing. Danny Miller hitting on a 42-yard field goal. Here it is again from our end zone camera right through the middle of the uprights, right on target, and they knew it the minute it was kicked. And look at Miller. He throws his arms up, says three points for our side, and you can see the intensity here is really something. Three to nothing. The University of Miami goes up here, and uh, it is going to be something. University of Florida Gators are going to have to regroup just a little bit now because Miami, with that score on the board, has already drawn first blood, and they've got the edge. Miller is definitely an accurate kicker. He's had some great years here at the Miami and won several football games for them under pressure. I'm sure that you remember, Ron, at Auburn four years ago or three years ago when he kicked one with 11 seconds to go as a freshman, and that showed a lot of poise on his part, and he's been able to uh, come on and just do a great right. job. Canes won that game against Auburn. Seven 17 to 16. That uh, drive, seven plays, covered 54 yards, a minute and 32 seconds used up on the drive, and the University of Miami Hurricanes go up three to nothing over the Florida Gators. Tremendous interstate rivalry here. The governor of the state is here, Bob Graham, today in the press box. There's the kickoff. Hampton behind the goal line, fumbles the ball, comes up with it. He's at the five. Across the 10 to the 15, cuts to the near side. He's at the 20. He's at the 25. Getting good blocking and brought down after a fine return at the 39-yard line, and it was Miller that made the kick. But Miller, Miller made the tackle. Danny Miller saw that. Uh, now here you have a chance. He takes the ball on the goal line. He fumbles the ball. Great penetration by the uh, kicking team of the University of Miami. But then he sees a little bit of a slot to the right side, changes his field right here, gets a wall of blocking in front of him, and takes off. Now. Right here is where the Hurricanes should have contained him. They'd have had uh, the, the Gators uh, in great shape, but three missed tackles, and he's off to the races before little Danny Miller throws his whole body into it and makes the tackle. First and 10 for the Gators at the 41. The give-off goes to Jones, sweeping on the far side, and he's upfield to the 45-yard line before Tony Ciccolo brings him down. That uh, it's a good thing that was Danny Miller the number number one because I remember another number one that played in this Orange Bowl named Garrow Upremium and had that been him, the return man would have been on Collins Avenue by now. That's correct. That's correct. Ball on the far side hash mark. It's second and six for the Gators at the 45. Miami digs in. Miami uses a 50 defense. They play those linebackers right in the gap. Pease is the quarterback with a split backfield behind him. Receivers left and right. He's rolling, throws, and it is complete at the 45-yard line, and he is brought down at the 49, and making the catch for the University of uh, Florida Gator team. 
was the number 82 Malarkey, Watch Mike Malarkey. Watch the pressure here by Lester Williams. Number 73 put big pressure on the quarterback, Wayne Pease. And David Jefferson comes up here to make the tackle. That brings up third down two on the 49-yard line, and it's on the Florida side of the midfield strike. Florida going with a slot offense to the left side and a split backfield behind Pease, the quarterback. Miami leading 3-0. Pease to throw, throws, and it is complete to Malarkey. He's got the first down at the 41-yard line of the Hurricanes. Well, he was wide open on the sideline. David Jefferson came in there a little bit late. I don't know who he beat on the play, but uh, he was wide open. And Pease, very, very cool, just laid the ball out to him. There you see Jefferson coming over, but he goes down, and uh, it's a little bit too late. First down for the Gators here now, and they've got good field position for the first time in this football game, trailing three to nothing. They're on the Miami 42-yard line. Receivers left and right. Pease give off, goes to Jones once again. Jones turns upfield here on the near side and carries to the 36-yard line. Good block by Malarkey. Number 82, the wide receiver, Marion and Jefferson make the tackle. James Jones, 6'2", 234 pounds, a junior from Pompano Beach, the leading rusher in 1980 for the Florida Gators, and he is something else. He's a man they've got to stop. He gives them a good running attack to complement that two-quarterback attack. And Wayne Pease isn't their only quarterback. they got a fellow named Huco that was a starter last year that got hurt, and he's standing by in the wings, and uh, Pell likes both of them. On second and four, it's Jones again. And Jones is brought down at the line of scrimmage or just beyond at the 34-yard line by David Jefferson. Good play by the Roverback. David Jefferson saw the play developing, read it well, watch him make his move here. Here he is. He comes up quickly, and he's right here. Avoids the block by number 82 on top of the runner and slows him down and waits for some help, and they bring him down. So it's about, oh, maybe a two- to three-yard pickup, and it'll be second down now or third down make it and two yards to go third ball on the 34 yard line of Miami and the Gators have the sideline to the left the wide side would be to the right Miami digs in Miami with a four man front one with a four four needs to throw throws and it is incomplete broken up by Buddy Marion the senior from Gainesville yes sir and Rodney Bellinger was in there too to break it up let's take a look at it right now Freddie Marion who has uh, how many interceptions, 10 interceptions in his career here at the University of Miami? He's fifth on the all-time list. Right. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. The University of Florida going for a field goal right here. And we're going to take a look at it as they try it right here, the field goal. It's a long field goal, and it falls way short, but there's a penalty on the play. No, there's not. The Canes take over. So the Canes take over on that missed field goal by the University of Florida. Canes have it first and 10, and the give goes to the running back. That was Lorenzo Smokey Roan, but there was a flag on the play. And Smokey picked up about a yard as far as the uh, gain is concerned, but with the flag on the play, we'll have to wait and see what the situation is. You're looking here at Howard Snellenberger, some of his brain trust, his assistants along the sidelines. He's the head coach uh, in, in the white shirt with the tie. The gentleman in the orange shirt is the offensive coordinator, Kim Helton. I asked Howard today what he was going to wear when he came out on the field, whether he was going to wear his togs or if he was going to wear his suit. And he said, I'm going to stick with the suit today. All right, the University of Florida got close. They tried a field goal. What was the range on that field goal, 52 guys? 52 yards was from the 42-yard line. Attempt, 52 yard attempt. It was no good. And uh, so the University of Miami takes over, but there's a penalty on the play, and they are penalized now back to about the 29-yard line. For holding. It looks like holding. You're right, Jim, <laughs> as usual. And so the Kings will start over with first down and 20 to go. The ball spotted down on the 24-yard line, and Miami will have the sideline to the left as they move from the right to the left in our stadium. Speedy Neal in the game now. High formation, Speedy Neal is the sophomore from Key West, and he is the up back now. They go to the split backfield. Kelly throws out to Rome. He's got him at the line of scrimmage, and he is hit and drilled by Florida's defensive strong side linebacker on the far side. 
Here we're taking a look at the replay as Kelly drops the throw, and he's got the time, rolls out, and right there is where he hits Speedy, and Speedy cuts back across the grain, but the University of Florida's Tim Wigman, the weak side linebacker, was able to diagnose it and make the hit. So a short gain on the play. It'll be second and 18 with the ball on the 27. Miami in their own territory. They're up 3-0 this afternoon. Howard Snellenberger looks towards the field. Dropping back to throw now is Kelly. Great Kelly protection. throws long. And it is too long. Intended for Rocky Belt, who was very deep. Rocky is a sprint champion from Alexandria, Virginia. All right. Rocky Belk, of course, taking over for Pat Walker, who... Uh, was drafted by the pros, failed to make the team. Unfortunately, nobody thought he would be cut, but uh, his wife had a baby right during the height of the preseason, and he was uh, tied up with that and had to leave camp, came back, and it ruined his chances. So Pat Walker did not make it uh, in the pros so far, but Rocky Belk is the speedster to back him up, and they like this kid a lot. He's got great hands and blinding speed. Mike Rodriguez just gone in. He has split to the top of your screen. Kelly dropping the throw on third down 18. He's being rushed and throws, and he's got Rodriguez along the far sideline. In Florida territory at the 48-yard line of the Gators. Kyle Knight makes the stop, but it's a first down for the Hurricanes. Well done play on both the part of the quarterback and the receiver. Rodriguez ran a beautiful pattern, and uh, Kelly held on to the ball to the last possible moment. It was under heavy pressure. He was nailed as he let the ball go, but he threw it through, straight as an arrow, and right here it is now. Watch the pressure on Kelly. Good protection, but it breaks down at the last moment, and they inundate him right here, but he still gets the ball off. Now watch Rodriguez. Great pattern. Keeps the one foot in bounds. That's all you need in college ball. He's got the catch, and it's a first down. First and 10 for the Canes on the 48-yard line of the Gators. Give off on the flanker reverse goes to Belk, who is still on his feet, being chased behind the line, and the play is blown dead. Play has been blown dead. Wilbur Marshall, the right outside linebacker, came in and made the hit for the Florida Gators. He diagnosed the play, saw what was going to happen. There's 6.41 to play in this first quarter with Miami up 3-0 on Florida. You heard some boos on that, and we might mention that nearly 30,000 of the 76,000 fans here at the Orange Bowl today are Gator fans, and uh, they didn't like the call. They thought they were going to throw Belk for a big loss, but it didn't happen. Uh, the referee blew the ball dead, figuring the forward progress was halted, and uh, so it's not as big a loss as it would have been. Second down on the 44-yard line as Kelly throws out in the flat, and he's got Keith Griffin, who has bounced out of bounds on the fire side at the 49. That is Archie and Ray Griffin's younger brother. Randy Clark makes the stop for Florida. I mentioned that Keith Griffin, one of the strongest men on the team, can bench press 425 pounds. He can bench press bigger than some of the, more than some of the big linemen. And he's a very strong kid. He spent the entire summer working out with brothers Ray and Archie at Ohio State Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. 5'9", 192, so you can see the family is all built alike. Yes, Rodriguez has gone back in, and Brodsky has come out, and Rodriguez will now split to the near side. Might mention that Mike Rodriguez's dad, Ted, played quarterback at FSU when a fellow named Burt Reynolds, who does some acting, <laughs> was there. Out to Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Hangs onto the football and has bounced out of bounds along the near side. It looked like they wanted to throw off the uh, off the lateral to Rodriguez outside, but uh, Florida diagnosed it. Roy Harris was right there to make the tackle. Florida diagnosed it very well, Jimmy. And the point is, Rodriguez also saw that the play was covered and very wisely held onto the football instead of throwing it up for grabs. They've got a guy back there named Mark Rush who you're going to see in the football game. He can throw it two off the halfback option. They've got Rodriguez, a former quarterback, who can throw the ball. <laughs> Excuse me. So this is a very explosive Hurricane offense. Greg LaBelle, a junior from Danielson, Connecticut, will kick for the Miami Hurricanes. Average is a little over 40 yards a kick. A low snap, but he gets it off nicely. It hits down and goes into the end zone. Just want to mention that University of Miami's Thompson was down there in a hurry. 47-yard kick, and that was a nice one by Greg LaBelle. It goes into the end zone, and that, of course, means no return. The Gators will take it over first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. With the score, 3 to nothing at the Orange Bowl in favor of the University of Miami Hurricanes over the Florida Gators. We'll be right back.
Jones off the left side, and he has bounced out of bounds at the 40-yard line on the far side by Freddie Marion, and that is that fine running back, James Jones, from Pompano Beach, 6'3", 236, and he's got a lot of foot speed, too, so he's a very tough guy to bring down. So the ball will be spotted down at the 39. All right, here is the first play on this series of downs. We missed it. Wayne Peace throws a long pass here, and it almost is completed. Who is that back there? It looked like Lippett back there. It was Ronnie, was Lippet Ronnie Lippet. knocking the ball down. So it is now third down, or make it second down. Well, wait a minute. It's first down and 10 to go. I don't follow what happened there. They may have picked up a first they down. That's up the, the 39. First down by Jones. That's yeah. correct. Jones off the right side and goes to the 44-yard line, and there are flags on the play. Up until this time, he'd had six carries for 34 yards. That's right. Jones picked up a first down on the last play. It got by me, but uh, here he is right now. I want nice you to notice that 71 that makes the tackle from the nose position. Tony Chicolo. His dad was an All-American here at the University of Miami in the early 50s. At guard, played both ways. And Tony's a lot bigger than his dad, Nick. He's 6'3", 244. His dad's about the same size now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't when he yes, was a pulling no, guard was a player. <laughs> seven years back. A holding call is going to go against Florida, and they're marching off the yardage, and that will put the ball down back at the 29-yard line. I don't know. Do you agree with me in the early going? Here we are. We've got about 524 left in the first quarter. The University of Miami has had good field position. They've got three points on the board. So far, it has been, I won't say it's been all the University of Miami, but uh, so far, the things have tumbled in favor of Miami. They're playing very, I, I feel both clubs are playing very, very well for a first ball game, and yes. both of them have been pretty consistent. Florida's uh, offense has been a little bit better than their defense, and Miami's defense has been super so far. That's Jones again. He goes to the 33-yard line before Chicolo again makes the stop. Second and 16, the ball will stay at the 33-yard line, and Watch a little Ciccolo less than five right Chicolo gets a good block thrown on him by number 52, their setter, Ricky Williams, but uh, works his way loose and makes the tackle. Ricky's, um, he's built a lot like Larry Little, six feet, 268. He's a freshman from Pensacola. Now you're looking at the Florida cheerleaders, and we are second and 16. Two things you can't afford if you want to be a major college contender for number one rankings as an inexperienced offensive line or an inexperienced secondary, and Pell's got both. He's rolling. Complete, and what a hit at the 44-yard line. Ronnie Lippett, man, what a hit that was. The man who caught the ball for the University of Florida was Miller, number 20. All right, now watch here. Here's Peace back to throw to Miller. Scrambles well out of the pocket, sees Miller open and throws the ball. But now watch Ronnie Lippett, 6 feet, 199 pounds, a junior. Or rather, 6'1", 174, a junior out of Sebring, Florida. Ronnie Lippett makes the hit and just upends Miller all the way. Third and six at the 43 for the Gators. They're in their own territory. They've got wide side to the left. Man in motion is Malarkey. They do a lot of things offensively. Pease throws, and it is intercepted by Marion at the 20-yard line. Fred Marion, 6'3". 193, a senior. He's from Gainesville, Florida. Lives right down the street from the University of Florida. All right, Freddie Marion, according to Coach Schnellenberger, the general of our secondary. He's a leader on defense who makes the calls and adjustments from a safety position. He was accorded first team All-American honors by the Football News and All-South mentioned by numerous other preseason publications. He needs just four interceptions to break the career. University of Miami uh, interception mark of 13. He's got 11 now with that one. He is already Miami's all-time leading tackler from the defensive back position. A great player, Freddie Marion, and the pros are looking at this kid. 6'3", 195, a senior from Gainesville. First and 10 for the Canes at their own 19-yard line. Kelly's give goes to Hobbs, and Hobbs over the left side as he goes over guard to the 23-yard line. John Whitaker, the defensive tackle for the University of Florida defensive squad, makes the uh, stop. He's 6'2", 251, and a senior from Mount Dora, Florida. All right, so peace intercepted by Marion, and the Canes get the ball back. They don't do much on the first play, about a three-yard pickup. It'll be second and seven. We've got three minutes and four seconds remaining. First quarter play at the Orange Bowl, a sellout crowd. Three to nothing, Canes leading. Kelly drops back to throw. He's got time. Throws, and it is intercepted by Florida at the 20. And Kelly makes the stop 
at the 10 yard line on David Galloway. He is the senior from Tampa that is one of the all time greats of Florida, 6'3, 274 pounds. He has been tapped a preseason All American and a preseason most outstanding defensive lineman in the Southeastern Conference, David Galloway. Extremely quick for a man his size. And Charlie Pels, his offense has run away from him. He still comes from the opposite side of the line and makes the tackles. He can be a dominating force at the line of scrimmage, and you saw it right there with a big interception during his career. 15 sacks, 144 tackles. I don't know how many interceptions, but that was a big one right there. It gives the Gators the ball, first and goal on the seven-yard line. They're on the near side hash mark. Pease is the quarterback, and he's got a split backfield behind him. Miami digging in. The give again goes to Jones. Jones off the right side, and he is in the end zone for the score. The Gators are now out front, 6-3, to three, as James Jones goes off the right side for Florida. Went right into the end zone from seven yards away. To make the score, 6-3, to three, the Gators leading, and now they go for the extra point. Yes. He is a fine back, and you can see as he moves the ball from his left hand to his right hand coming at the camera just a moment ago, and uh, then going across the goal line, he had the ball out in front of him trying to break the plane of the goal line, make sure that he had a touchdown. Uh, just a very fine college football player. Brian Clark, a senior from Sarasota, Florida, will attempt the extra point for Florida, and it is good. And so the Gators have now taken a 7-3 lead on the University of Miami Hurricanes here in the Orange Bowl with 2.42 to play in the first quarter. Well, Coach Howard Schnellenberger and Charlie Pell both said it when I talked to them earlier this week. They said, what will determine the outcome of this game will be six or seven big plays. You just saw David Galloway make a big play. The uh, big uh, man going up and intercepting a Kelly pass, uh, just reaching the arm up there, batting it and pulling it in. Getting it back to the seven yard line, first play from scrimmage. James Jones scores from seven yards out, point after good by Brian Clark. It's a seven to three football game, and how quickly things have turned around. Yes, they have. So Here's now the Florida Gators in control, or at least uh, they have, I won't say they have silenced this crowd, but they've got them thinking. Jones has eight carries for 45 yards and a touchdown, and we're in the first quarter. Well, I think what we thought we were going to see is what we're seeing. A high-powered, highly offensive football game with a lot of offense, a lot of uh, different uh, looks on offense, both teams coming out and gunning for all they got. This is not one of those three yards in a cloud of dust football games. This is definitely not a Big Ten game. There's no, no doubt about no, that. No, no, no. Getting ready for the kickoff now. Clark will kick off, and it is high and will be taken by Mark Rush at the 15. He's at the 20 and up to the 25-yard line before he is brought down. So that gives Miami pretty good field position at their own 25-yard line. It'll be first and 10. Here is Rush from Fort Lauderdale. And he is hit down by Vito McKeever from the Florida Special Teams. Two minutes, 39 seconds to play first quarter. 7-3 to three the score. The Gators are up on the University of Miami. Howard Snellenberger wipes the perspiration from his brow. And it's from the, I'm sure, a little from worry and a little from the sun. It's very, very warm this afternoon here in Miami. It's going to be about 120 degrees down on the Orange Bowl field. That's natural turf they're playing on. Fields receivers, in excellent condition, by the way. Receivers left and right. That's belt 20 at the bottom of your screen. The give off now goes to Chris Hobbs, the fullback. And he goes to the 27, 28 yard line before Fred McAllister brings him down. Miami has taken a bad rap on their backs. They keep saying the back's a little too small and a step too slow, but Roan and Hobbs have certainly done the job. And when you take a guy like Roan can average uh, or, or rack up 245 yards in a game, I don't see anything slow about that. Me either. Kelly is now five of nine. For 50 yards, he's had one interception this afternoon. Second and six at the 29 for Miami in the orange uniforms. Give goes to Smokey Roan. And off the right side, he is hit and brought down at the 31-yard line. Roy Harris made the tackle for the Gators. That'll bring up third and four on the 31. Here you're looking at the replay. Kelly gives it to Smokey Roan, and he just was in too much traffic. He just couldn't hit the hole quite in time. Mark Rush has now gone in 
at one of the running back spots. There's Charlie Pell on the sidelines. He's certainly turned the Florida Gators around. 0-10-1 his first year. And last year, look at him. They go all the way to the Tangerine Bowl and beat Maryland. Out in the flat now, the pass goes from Kelly to Larry Brodsky. And Brodsky's knocked out of bounds on the far side, and they've got the first down. Bruce Vaughn makes the tackle. This is a big play in the early going. They've just had a touchdown scored against them. They don't want to give up the football again. They want to get something generated on offense. And Mr. Brodsky, Mr. Dependable, is right there. And uh, check that. Is it Rodriguez or Brodsky? Brodsky was the receiver, and Rodriguez just gone into the ball game. Right, okay. Belk number 20, slot offense, slot would be to the left side, and an eye formation. Kelly's pitch goes to Rush, Rush cutting outside, and he is down at the 39-yard line. Fernando Jackson makes the tackle for Florida. Gain of about two, second and eight. Well, I spot the ball down on the fourth. I'm going to set something up now. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm only basing on what Howard Schnellenberger told me before the football game. I said, can we look for anything fancy? He said, look for Mark Rush. He says to try a couple of sweeps, and don't be surprised if Mark Rush throws the ball on a halfback option. We'll keep an eye open for that. Brodsky has gone back in in place of Rodriguez. Belk has flipped to the bottom of your screen, and we've got an eye formation. Hobbs is the up back 33. Kelly to throw. Lots of Kelly time. throws, and he's got Brodsky complete to the 41 yard line. Boy, those guys work well together, don't they? Yes, they, work they do. work out together every day, year in and year out, 365 days a year. Those two guys throw a football at each other. Brodsky has timing. done an excellent job. His dad is the offensive uh, backfield coach here at the University of Miami. There's a timeout on the field right now. The University of Florida wants a timeout to think things over. Ball at the 42. It'll be first and 10 for the Canes coming back. Less than 30 seconds to play in this first quarter. All right, let's recap what happened. The University of Florida got the ball, couldn't do anything. They punted. The University of Miami in their first series settled for a 42-yard Danny Miller field goal. That made it 3 to nothing. Then they exchanged punts. The uh, University of Florida got close enough for a 52-yard field goal attempt. It was no good. Then Freddie Marion it, uh, intercepted Wayne Peace, the uh, University of Florida quarterback. Freddie Marion, the big field general for the University of Miami Hurricanes, intercepted. The University of Miami turned it around. Kelly intercepted by Galloway. And uh, the first play after that interception, James Jones scored from the seven-yard line. Ryan Clark with a point after made it seven to three. And that's where we stand right now with 29 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Florida Gators on top before a jam-packed crowd at the Orange Bowl. It couldn't be a better day for football. We've got about 90 degree temperature. That's a little warm out there on the field, but there's hardly any wind. If you're going to come to South Florida to do some fishing today, the winds are out of the northeast, less than 10 knots, seas three feet or less, and it's just a, a great, great day for football. There is Earl Morrow, the great quarterback for the Miami Dolphins, who took him to the Super Bowl when Greasy was injured in 1973, 17-0 that year. He now is the quarterback coach for the University of Miami Hurricanes. It was in 72 he took him. In 73, they went back. Okay. Well, you can see how Earl has influenced the quarterbacks. Kelly is smooth and cool and poised. He just, he, he looks like a pro quarterback already. He attributes all of his success. The pitch goes to Smokey Roan, sweeping on the outside on the far side, and he is bounced out of bounds at the 40 and right in front of the Florida bench by Fred McAllister, the strong side linebacker. So far this afternoon, the University of Miami has had five first downs, and the University of Florida Gators have had two. Brodsky and Rush now go into the ball game. Rodriguez and Roan, number 46, come out. Ball is on the far side hash mark. That gives Miami the wide side to the left, and Brodsky splits to that wide side to the bottom of your screen. Eye formation, and Rush is at the top of the eye. Hobbs is the up back 33. Kelly, rolling, pitches to Rush. Rush hangs on to it, and he's up the old to the 36-yard line before he is brought down. Some very, very uh, <laughs> nifty ball handling there. I say nifty because it was a little uh, a little close. Now watch here. Kelly throws the ball out. Hart grabs it with one hand and pulls it in and still chalks up a nice game. So that's going to make it third and about four. Mark comes to the near side. So that'll bring a third down four. The ball on the 36-yard line, and that is the end of the first quarter with the score, the University of Florida 7 and the University of Miami 3. Fourth down and two, and the University of Miami is going to go for it. Fourth and two, ball on the 34. A 
Florida, Kelly at quarterback. Speedy Neal is the up back. Kelly dropping the throw. Got time, and it is added up into the air, caught by Mark Cooper, the tight end, and he goes to the 30 yard line. Mark Cooper, the tight end. Watch it here. The ball is hit. Kelly under tremendous pressure. The ball is hit by the big lineman putting the charge on. And Mark Cooper brings it down and advances it for a first down. A broken play, and the Kings get a tremendous break. And now, maybe the breaks are evening themselves up. Galloway with the interception of Jim Kelly early in the ball game, set up the first Gator score, and now the Kings get a break. First and 10 for the Kings on the 30. The give goes to Rush right up the middle. And he goes inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. By the way, in the first quarter, the University of Miami picked up 23 yards on the ground, and Florida picked up 45. Passing-wise, Kelly had 75 yards passing, and Pease had 29. So the Gators had the rushing game, and the Canes had the passing game in the first quarter. Score 7-3 to three if you've just joined us. And by the way, welcome aboard. University of Florida leading the University of Miami. Second down and eight on the 28-yard line. High formation and Kelly at the line. Kelly to throw, looks, and it is intercepted by Florida at the five. Upfield of the 10 to the 15 yard line, Bruce Vaughn, a junior from Largo, Florida, made the interception that was intended for Rocky Belt. Jim Kelly is putting the ball up. He is throwing it well, but the ball is hanging just a little bit too long. And watch here is Bruce Vaughn, number 47, 5'11", 175 pounds junior from Largo, Florida. The ball is right on the money, it looks like, to Brodsky, but instead, Vaughn grabs it and makes a nice return. So Kelly intercepted for the second time this afternoon. The earlier interception by Galloway set up the 70-yard touchdown run by James Jones on the first play after the interception. This time, of course, the uh, Gators don't have the field position they had after the first interception. They're on the 15-yard line, make it the, oh, about the 17. First and 10 for Florida. They're on the near side hash mark. The give off goes to the fullback, and he is off the near side, and he has bounced out of bounds at the 22-yard line. And uh, carrying the ball for the University of Florida was Birch, who has just gone in. Ronnie Lippett made the tackle. Birch is 5'10", 203, a junior from Bartow. Big boy. So he advances the football to the 23. That'll make it second and five for the Gators. They're up seven to three on Miami with 12.52 to play in the second quarter. They go with a slot offense. That is Wayne Pease, the sophomore quarterback behind the line. Miami going with a five-man front, playing their linebackers right in the gap. Pease rolling, throws, and he's got his man out of the flat, but he has bounced out of bounds at the... Looks like about the 28-yard line, but it's enough for a first down. David Jefferson made the stop. David Jefferson, the roverback, came up quickly and knocks him out of bounds, but not before he picks up enough for the first down. Nice play. They're going to have to do something about that uh, flare out, that swing pass to the outside, because they've been chalking up some good yardage on it. Of course, Schnellenberger said, we look for them to complete 20, 25 passes against us. He said, we'll let them complete some of those short ones. When they get down close, we're going to have to tighten up. First and 10 on the 29. The give off again goes to Birch. He turns up field across the 30 yard line to the 32. Ronnie Lippin and Scott Nicholas make the tackle. Shannon Birch carrying the football for the Florida Gators. You'll never guess who I ran into, speaking of Scott Nicholas, but who I ran into out in the uh, concourse just walking down to the booth here a few moments ago. <laughs> and it uh, is a guy you should know by the name of Gonzalez who played linebacker for the Hurricanes for a little bit, huh? Barry Gonzalez. He had a great career at the University of Miami. They go with a slot offense now to the right side. Dixon is in the slot. Second and six ball on the 33. Gators in their own territory. They're leading 7-3. The give off now goes to the halfback, and he's across the 35 and 36-yard line, carrying the football. Lorenzo Hampton, Greg Brown, the junior linebacker from Woodbridge, Virginia, the tackler for the University of Miami. 
taking a look at that Gators offensive line, they've got Danny Fike at left tackle. He's a junior. They've got uh, John Moyle, a sophomore at left guard. They've got a freshman at center, Ricky Williams, another sophomore at right guard, and then another sophomore at right tackle. So a, a relatively inexperienced offensive line, but they're doing some good blocking right now. But then again, they're not running right at the heart of the Kings defense either. They're doing a lot of sweep action. Third and two now on the 37, a big play coming up. The give off goes Lester. Lester. Blocked behind the line, and Lester Williams makes the tackle. Big Lester, 6'3", 277. Senior from Miami makes the tackle. Here's a guy who came in his freshman year. He was All-American on just about every high school squad in the United States of America. They had expected big things of him his freshman year. He never quite developed. He wasn't mean enough for him. They had to get him a little more mean. He turned out to be a gentle giant, and he certainly come around this year. More cabbage kicks for Florida. Calling for the fair catch is Fred Marion at the Miami 28-yard line. So Fred Marion brings it down. He's a very sure-handed punt returner and brings it down at the, looks like 27, 28 yard line. It'll be first and 10 at the 28, 39 yard boot for Bora Cabbage, the punter from Willingboro, New Jersey. Of course, the important thing isn't necessarily how, how long you can kick a football, but how long you can hang it up there. Okay, we'll be right back with the University of Florida leading the University of Miami 7 to 3 in the second quarter. Florida first and 10 at the 49 yard line and you are looking now at Sebastian the Ibis. And the Florida Gators had it first and 10 on the 37 yard line. He's rolled and through and it was uh, incomplete pass or rather it was a complete pass and it gives them another first down all right here's that play I told you we could look for rush on the halfback option gets ready to throw hesitates by this time the Gators are reading it in the secondary and watch Tony Lilly he just throws it right into his arms Lilly just comes right in under the ball goes out of bounds and now the Gators have it and this is second down for them a running play picks up three four yards Tony Ciccolo in on the stop and that was James Jones running the football. So now they'll move up to about the Canes 33 yard line. It'll be second down and eight to go. And now turn the play by play back over to you, Jim. It was a wild sequence. Nine minutes and 47 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Florida up seven to three. They're in Miami territory. Miami's defense digs in. Slot offense to the left side and a split backfield behind Wayne Pease, the fine sophomore quarterback for the Gators. The give off goes to Jones and he is hit and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. And uh, bringing him down was the linebacker Greg Brown, who's a 6'2", 222 pound junior from Woodbridge, Virginia, number 93. And you can see how Greg plays this very well as he comes off of his man and still comes across and gets a hand on Jones and brings him down. But there was a flag on the play. And that's being discussed right now with the Florida captain, Pease. They're marching off a five-yarder against the University of Miami. Well, fortunes have certainly started to swing sides. against the University of Miami Hurricanes. They now have had three interceptions. It has been Jim Kelly intercepted twice, once by Galloway, once by Bruce Vaughn, and then Mark Rush intercepted by Tony Lilly. And those three turnovers are changing the, uh, the look of this ball game. Second and one on the 27 for the Florida Gators now. The give again goes to Jones, and Jones cuts outside. He is hit and brought down, but there's a flag on the play in the Florida backfield. I think you're going to have that uh, some illegal motion there. Leon Evans came in and made the stop. Big Leon Evans, he's had to play himself back into the into the lineup here. He quit football for a while and then decided to come back, and Howard Schnellenberger kind of put him on probation, and uh, he makes a nice stop here on number 30, James Jones, the fullback. So Green. now the penalty goes against Florida, and it is for illegal motion, and so that will set the football back to the 33-yard line, and it'll be second and six for the Gators. And Florida has been penalized twice for 15 yards this afternoon. Miami has been penalized twice for 10. So as far as penalties are concerned, it's been pretty even this afternoon. Slot offense now, and it's to the bottom of your screen, as you can see, to the left side of the quarterback, Pease. A lone setback behind Pease. 
long count. He drops the throw, oh. and the play is blown dead. I think it's going to be for too much time. I do, too. Three interceptions by the University of Florida, and that's something we didn't expect. That's a stat we didn't expect to see in the early going. Of course, uh, Kelly's interception by Galloway was just a superb effort by Galloway. He is a great player for the University of Florida defense, and uh, he's a big 6'3", 274-pound pound senior left tackle out of Tampa, and the big left tackle just reached up and batted the ball. So really, that's just one of those interceptions that happens because of great individual effort on the part of the defense player. That makes it second and 11 ball at the 37, and Florida has it in Miami territory, and now Pease calls a timeout, and he wants to go to the sideline to talk with head coach Charlie Pell of Florida. With eight minutes and 30 seconds left in the second quarter, the University of Florida leading the University of Miami Hurricanes 7-3, and we'll be back in just a moment. Second and 11, Pease drops back, looks, throws out in the flat, and he's got his man at the 35, he's at the 30, he's at the 20 to 15, and he is in the end zone as Florida has scored again. The University of Florida Gators, Spencer Jackson, the flanker, takes that quick out pass from Wayne Pease, the quarterback, and races into the end zone. So Florida is now up by a score of 13 to 3. University of Miami Hurricanes and they'll go now for the extra point Brian Clark will be the extra point man for the Gators there it is again and you can see Wayne Peace just lays the ball out there they've been utilizing that play very effectively all year long and Rodney Bellinger comes over the sophomore from Coral Gables and unable to make the stop and that's it touchdown right there David Jefferson in pursuit here too little too late Clark's the kick point is after is good and it is now a 14 to three football game and the Florida Gators have come to play today in the hot sun at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Eight minutes and 22 seconds left to play in the second quarter. And the University of Miami now behind by 11 points. However, they are an explosive ball club and they can make the big play. And that's something that Howard Snellenberger talked about in his press conference. He felt they'd have to make six big plays to win. Well. You have to take a look at this football game in the early going. It's 14 to 3. The University of Florida has played opportunistic football. They have taken advantage of the breaks to uh, score their touchdowns. And the Canes have given them the breaks with three interceptions. And, uh, of course, that play was a little bit of a breakdown on the defensive part of the Hurricanes. But overall, the Hurricanes have played a pretty good football game. It's when they've done some of the razzle-dazzle that they've gotten caught up in uh, things. I think if they settle down here, they can uh, narrow the gap and get back in it. It's very important now for them to score before halftime. If they could put seven points on the board, go in trailing 14 to 10, say, then it's a new ball game at halftime. But if they don't score now, then their work is cut out. They're going to have to play from... Uh, well, from 11 points down, and that's not too good entering the second half. Mark Rush will return for the University of Miami, and Clark will kick off for the University of Florida. Out of the end zone, no return on that when it comes out to the 20-yard line, and so it'll be first and 20 for the University of Miami. And their offensive unit has got to get to work right now because the Florida Gators have scored two touchdowns here in the first half to go up by a score of 14 to 3. Well, having watched Coach Howard Schnellenberger be head coach here for two years, he's compiled a record of 14 and 8 in two years, and uh, you you know this guy, what he's thinking about on the sidelines. He's going to say, the heck with all of this, uh, the razzle-dazzle now. Let's start playing some solid football. Let's take it to him, and that's just exactly what they'll go back and do. He doesn't have the greatest field position. Probably go to the running game here and uh, go for the high percentage passes in the early going until they get some field position. Kelly's give goes off to Chris Hobbs. Hobbs outside and gets up to the 25-yard line before he is brought down by Val Brown, the outside linebacker for Florida. Having watched Roan and Hobbs for the last couple of years, you have to say both players in the running uh, back position for the University of Miami are playing, uh, it seems, a lot harder and running a lot better than they did last year. They really have improved with one year. Hobbs really came on towards the end of last year. He started out a little bit slow, but towards the end of the year, he really came on strong and had a fine game in the Peach Bowl. Second and five on the 25 for the Hurricanes. Again, Hobbs gets the call, and he goes to the 27-yard oh. line. He was swarmed under. Florida knew he was coming that way. They Number were right 95. there to meet him. 
Tim Tony Wigman. Yes, Tim Wigman. Tom Wigman, 6'1", 226 pounds, junior from Jacksonville Beach. Third and three now for Look the Hurricanes on oh. the 27. He just stopped him cold, didn't he? At 226 and 6'1", he's big enough to go to work. <laughs> Third and two for the Canes. They trail 14 to three here in the Orange Bowl second quarter. Receivers left and right. Kelly to throw. Throws oh, and it is low. Intended for Brodsky and it bounced along the ground as his hand could have been a little bit. Well, well that's just what I was going to say. We're sitting here in the booth and we're sweating. It's a hot day. I would imagine his hands are wet and the ball slipped right out of his hand. He had a man wide open and couldn't hit him. Brodsky was just standing there waiting for the ball and couldn't get it to him. So that brings in the punter, Greg LaBelle. Last year, he averaged a uh, little over 40 and a half yards per kick, 40.6, if you want to be specific. He's dependable, though. He's, he's a good kicker for college ball. That's a good percentage for a college ball. And he gets his kick away. It's wobbly. It's going to hit down at the 40-yard line and uh, be blown dead right at the 41-yard line. Took well, out of a Florida yeah. bounce back. Here we go now. The Gators got great field position. They're at their own 42-yard line. They'll take over first and 10. They've got a 14 to 3 lead, and they can pull a few stops right now. That was only a 30-yard punt by LaBelle that time. He kind of shanked it a little bit. And uh, it held up there. It was good coverage downfield, so they didn't get any return bounce on it. But here come the Gators now, very much in control because of a few big plays. And the Canes defense is going to be tested right here as we near the end of the second, the second quarter. Slot offense now for the University of Florida. Pease behind the quarterback in a split backfield. And the give off again goes to Jones off the left side. And he goes up to the 36-yard line. Tony Ciccolo and Ronnie Lippett, the tacklers for the University of Miami. In the early going, it becomes very apparent that Tony Ciccolo is going to be an adequate replacement for Jim Burke. He is playing a super football game here today. Yes, he is. I would say a little bit more than an adequate replacement. Yes. I, I don't think that uh, anybody around here is going to forget Jim Burke anytime soon, but Tony Ciccolo measures up to the standards of the great middle guards that have played at the University of Miami. Reuben Carter, Don Latimer, and so many, many more. Second and six, ball on the 46-yard line. Pease give off goes to the halfback he comes to the near side and comes to the 50-yard line before Scott Nicholas brings him down and carrying the ball for Florida was Brown Charlie Pell now has the luxury of a 11-point lead good field position and can pretty much call what he wants to call now in the way of play so the hurricane defense being very sternly tested here with the ball at the midfield stripe resting smack in the middle of the 50-yard line here's an important down for both plays third and two the ball right on the 50 it's on the near side hash mark, so the Gators have wide side to their right slot offense and a split backfield. And the Miami digs in, going with a five-man front. Pease to throw, throws out in the flat, and it's complete. And he has bounced out of bounds on the far side. But there's a flag down on the play, Jimmy, back in the defensive secondary, and I think it is going to go against the University of Florida. I'm not sure, but some of the Miami players are indicating that, and there's a flag down in the backfield, too, so it's uh, going to be interesting. But they sure worked this play on this little swing pass. Dwayne got Dixon this. is the guy that caught the ball. Oh, they've got this down to perfection, don't they? Florida Gators really look tough with this play. Let's wait and see what the penalties are all about now. Credit Rodney Bellinger with a tackle. We've got a 14 to three game, Florida in front of Miami. The Hurricanes would like to get that football back before the end of the half, five minutes and 32 seconds to go in the second quarter. It was 7-3 at the end of the first quarter as Florida was leading. Miami drew first blood with that field goal. A holding call and it's gonna be against Florida. So that's gonna be a costly penalty for the Gators at this point in time. Well, Charlie Pell doesn't like that one at all, and I don't blame him. They were in a very strong field position. They were looking at a first down with that play, and now they are back, and uh, that gives some new life to the Canes. 6.32 remaining in the first half of play, 14-3 ball game, and the Florida Gators have come to play. The University of Miami rated six-point favorites by some, two-point favorites by others. I saw one service had the University of Florida rated six-points favorites, so I guess you could rate, rate this a toss-up here today. Pretty much, uh, especially with the fact that there is an intense rivalry now between the two schools. Yeah, you can throw all of the, <laughs> everything out the window when it comes down to this. You never know what's going to happen when the Gators and the Canes get together. Third you know, and seven. I was just going to say, Jimmy, that 
this is the first time that both teams are taking a look. Florida for the first time, uh, well, not for the first time, but taking a serious look at the Southeastern Conference Championship this year. The University of Flor uh, Miami Hurricanes with, with their schedule, looking at a possible national championship. And we'll be back here in just a moment. Dees drops the throw, throws long, and it is intercepted by Bellinger from Miami at the 15. And he is across the 20, fumbles the ball out of bounds, and Ronnie Lippett was right there. It was intended for Steve Miller, who was deep on that play on the fly pattern, but Bellinger was right there to make the big play in the interception for the Miami Hurricanes. Rod is 5'9", 183, and a sophomore. Okay, watch him position himself here for the football. Right here, well, we didn't get a chance to see it, but he really positioned himself well on the receiver and came up with the football. The receiver went down at the last second, and he came up with a football. Good interception for Rodney Bellinger, young sophomore back there. Not very big, only 5'9", but a big interception as Pell was pulling all the stops and trying to put 21 on the board before halftime and really nail, uh, nail the... Nail the... I'm going to say nail the screws into the coffin, but nail the uh, nails into the coffin, okay? The give off goes to Hobbs. Hobbs off the Look right side go. and really tears a field across the 30-yard line to the 31-yard line for a first down. Tim Newton, the weak side linebacker for Florida, made the tackle. You know, I keep thinking about Chris Hobbs coming up to us on the airplane a couple of years back, coming home, and he said, how many yards did I gain on the game, fellas? And we said 33, so that's nothing to write home about, is it? I just better go sit down and shut up. <laughs> and, and, you know, he has really, he plays with a lot of heart, this little guy. Not a big back, but he plays with a tremendous amount of heart. So far this afternoon, he's picked up 27 yards on six carries. Kelly gives off to Keith Griffin, and Keith Griffin tries it on the right side and picks up a, maybe a yard before David Galloway makes the stop. Keith Griffin, 5'9", 192, ran into David Galloway, 6'3", 274. Keith grew up in the shadows of the Ohio State Stadium in Columbus, Ohio, and decided to come to the University of Miami to play football, and they predict a bright future for him. He's a sophomore. Paul Brown watching his career closely. <laughs> Says, if I can get Ray and Archie, I may get Keith one of these days. <laughs> Second and nine. Ball of the 32-yard line for Miami. They're in their own territory. Kelly to throw, and he throws, and it is complete for Brodsky at the midfield strike. Brodsky driven out of bounds, but what a nice catch. And what great concentration on the part of Jimmy Kelly. Here is a guy that Schnellenberger says can be a Heisman Trophy winner next year, his senior year, if he continues developing like he is, under heavy pressure, heard the footsteps, still. And you notice he let the ball go before Brodsky ever made the cut. He knew where Brodsky was going to be. That's how close these two guys work together. Brodsky's just a very fine young man. His buddies here call him the Jerusalem Cowboy. <laughs> He's got to be a fine young man. His dad's coaching. He can't get away with anything. Takes no chances, though. He wears the star of David out of St. Christopher Medal. That's right. First and ten. And Kelly to throw. Throws long. He's got him down, He's man. He's got Brodsky deep. And it's it is intercepted. intercepted by Florida at the five the 10, the 15, the 20. Brought down at the 26-yard line and making the interception for Florida, Vito McKeever, the tackle made by Keith Griffin. Vito McKeever, it looked like Brodsky was cutting between two defenders and was going to break free, but Vito McKeever from Donellan, Florida, watch this interception. Great play, he just outpaced uh, Brodsky there at the last moment and pulls it down on the five, and then keeps his footing after he took an initial hit and comes back and who got him number 44 that would be Keith Griffin I believe number 44 making the tackle first and 10 ball on the 27 yard line for Florida they're in possession the give off now goes to Birch Birch brought down behind the line of scrimmage and Leon Evans makes the tackle all right let's put this in perspective now the University of Miami finally does something defensively. They stop a deep thrust by the University of Florida with a Rodney Bellinger interception. They come right back, and Florida intercepts them again. Fourth turnover for the University of Miami in this football game first half. You can't have four turnovers against a team that's rated as high as sixth or fourth on some surveys, preseason surveys, in the top ten. They like the Gators. Second and 11 for the Gators at the 26. Pease throws out in the flat, and he's got his man at the 25, driven out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Spencer Jackson was the receiver. David Jefferson made the hit for Miami. 
you can bet right now that the University of Miami coaching staff sitting up here in the booth right next to us is taking a close look at this little swing pass. They have been gaining tremendous yardage on it. It's been good one time for a touchdown for him, and that's the man who scored the touchdown right there, Spencer Jackson from Delray Beach. One of the things that Howard Snellenberger talked about that has helped my Florida turn its program around has been their fine offensive coordinator, Mike Shanahan, who was at Minnesota and helped them establish many Big Ten passing records. He came to the Gators last year, and you can see the effect of his work. Dropping back to throw now is Pease, and he's got John L. Brown at the 25, he's at the 30, and to the 34-yard line before he is brought down. And Greg Zapala makes the hit for the University of Miami, 6'2", 220, a junior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Gators set that play up very well, and it looked like it was going to be a big gainer, but uh, the Canes, it took enough time to develop where the Canes could read it, and uh, they come up and make the stop, and it puts them into a fourth down situation. They got Freddie Marion back there deep. The University of Miami Hurricanes with Marion deep now, and they're getting ready for the kick. Laura Cabbage will kick away for Florida. Marion takes it at the 22. And he is swarmed under by the Gators. Just, they were downfield. Their special teams did a good job. Freddie saw him coming, and he, you know, you got to give the guy credit. He, first of all, he fielded the ball, saw they had good pursuit downfield. He uh, did not signal for a fair catch. Once he took the ball, he saw he didn't have any chance of outrunning him. And that shows the, the field generalship. Instead of running backwards and, and trying to do it, he just took the ball and kind of, so well, I'm not going to get any further. They've got me. Let's go down right here and not risk losing the ball. So he does so, and the Canes take over now on their own 23-yard line. It'll be first and 10. They're trailing 14 to 3. Two minutes and eight seconds left in the first half. The Gators have come to play today. They've taken advantage of four interceptions to put the 14 points on the board. Hobbs and Griffin, the two mini-backs, are in the backfield for the Miami Hurricanes. Kelly drops the throw on first down. He's being pursued. Runs out of the pocket, hangs on to it, comes up and goes across the 30 and comes out of bounds here on the near side. And there's a flag on the play. Bruce Vaughn, number 47, was the uh, pursuit man for the University of Florida. All right, I think they're going to have, watch this now, I think they're going to have Rocky Belk for clipping. Now watch here. Here's the... Here's Kelly starting to run. He, he sees he's got some room. Now he's running. Let's see if we can pick up the clip right here. Right there it is. They got uh, Belk right there. Number 20, Rocky Belk. They got him on a clip, I believe. We'll see what the call is. Look at the skyline of Miami. The Magic City. Beautiful day here. South Florida skies are bright and sunny, but it is hot on the field. I would say 110, 120 degrees down there in the field. Walk down there with a suit on before the game and about burnt up. I don't know how these guys do it and go at full blast all the time. That's what it's going to be. It's uh, going to be a major 15 yards or maybe a half the distance. And uh, I think it's going to be the clip on Belk. It is. Mm. Tough, tough break for the Canes with two minutes left in the half. They were hoping to get some sort of field position so they could do something with it. So that sets the football back to the 15-yard line. Here come the Canes. First down. 18 yards to go. A split backfield behind Jim Kelly. Kelly dropping the throw. Throws long. It's intended for Mike Rodriguez, number six, and is caught. Yes, sir. He held on to it. Mike Rodriguez, six feet, 190, a senior from Tallahassee. He's the fellow we told you about earlier who started his career as a quarterback at Miami and was switched to wide receiver last year when... It looked like he had more of a chance to play at that position. Just a great, great catch. Mike had the advantage over the defender. He saw the ball coming, and I don't think the defender did. First and 10 on the 44 of Florida for Miami. Kelly pitches now to Keith Griffin. Griffin turns outside. He's at the 40 and fumbles the football. And there's a fight for it between the 40 and the 35. I don't believe it, but the Gators have got the it. Gators Five turnovers. that fumble. University of Florida recovers that fumble. And that was a big defensive play as far as the Gator team was concerned because Miami was driving. Bruce Vaughn made the recovery. All right, we can't see Keith lose the ball, but he does right there. And uh, there you see one of the Gators come in and get it right there. They knew they had it right there. So that's five turnovers now, first half for the University of Miami Hurricanes. Gators have the ball with a minute 31 left in the half. First and 10 on the 38-yard line. 
Pease, the quarterback for Florida, slot offense. Pease throws, and it is complete to the midfield strike to Mike Malarkey, the junior from Fort Lauderdale, the tight end, and Fred Marion makes the tackle. So that'll be another first down for the Florida Gators. Florida leading 14 to three with a minute 24 to play in the first half and they've gone with a hurry up offense as they pick up the first down. They're at the 48 yard line of Miami. The swing pass out once again to Dixon who cuts outside and is knocked out of bounds on the 35 yard line. Howard Snellenberger is upset about something on the field. Talking well, to one of the officials. They're going to call Jefferson a penalty. The uh, they're going to call a penalty, I think, on the University of Florida here. I think there was some movement on the backfield. It could be Peace made a little move before he took the snap. That's what it looked like to me. But again, these guys are going to have to, and I'm talking about the University of Miami defenders, on that little swing pass, they seem to think these guys are going to take a quick step out of bounds, and all they do is take a sidestep and then shoot down the sidelines. They're going to have to hit them, and they're going to have to work on that at halftime. First and 15 now for the Gators at the 47-yard line. Miami's got a man down on the sidelines. I can't see who it is. If one of our spotters can pick it up, let us know who the man is on the sidelines, and we'll keep you posted on that. So we're back to play with a minute and 13 seconds to play in the first half. Florida leading Miami 14-3. There's the snap. He's rolling out. He's being pursued, and he is gets his pass off as he is hit. He was under a lot of pressure by Greg Brown, Brown who had really come in strong. The uh, pass was complete to the tight end, but it was behind the line of scrimmage, so it was for a little bit of a loss. A two-yard gain, let's say, but still, they're behind the line. It's second and 13, and uh, David Jefferson was the University of Miami player who was down along the sidelines, but uh, for all intents and purposes, he is up now and all right. Swing pass out goes as incomplete. Do you know that's intended again for Dixon? That's the first swing pass that they have missed this afternoon. That play has been so effective and the Hurricanes have got to put a stopper on that one. It's been good for one touchdown and it has been a consistent ground gainer and they have got it down to perfection. That's the one thing the Gators can do. Peace can throw that swing pass. Either hits uh, uh, Spencer Jackson out there or the other man and they just do the job with it. And that's been their bread and butter play all afternoon long here in the first half. 37 seconds remaining to play first half. Third and 13 at the 49 yard line for Florida. The give off goes to the fullback Jones and he is drilled behind the line. Getting in there is big Bob Nelson. 250 pound senior from Dundalk, Maryland. Nelson was right there. They yes, call him was. fuzzy because, because of his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's why they call him fuzzy. <laughs> There's a timeout on the field with fourth down coming up now for the Gators. Fourth and 16 at the 46 yard line. And they're on their side of the 50. Florida's leading 14 to three with 29 seconds to play in this, the first half. Miami Hurricanes with a record last year of eight and three in regular season. The win in the Peach Bowl, nine and three, and the University of Florida Gators, seven and four regular season. A win in the Tangerine Bowl. Miami's other opponents who will be here in the Orange Bowl this season include Penn State, Notre Dame, Houston, Virginia Tech, all four bowl teams, and Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt played a good game against the Hurricanes last year. On the road, it's Texas and FSU, North Carolina State, and one of the most underrated schools in the country, Mississippi State. Well, that's why I said, I, I, I made a mention earlier, and I want to clarify it for the people watching on the USA Network. They, I said, University of Miami has a shot at a national championship, only if they win all their games, but their <laughs> schedule is there. And we talk about the University of Florida with their tough schedule, too. They have a schedule that is a, a bear, too. Both teams face awesome schedules. Fair catch call for by Fred Marion at the 15-yard line. Borakavich was the punter for the University of Florida. So with 21 seconds to play in the first half, the Miami Hurricanes take over the football at their own 15-yard line. Jim, does it surprise you watching the University of Miami come out first half a team that played with such tremendous poise against Florida last year up in Gainesville comes out in the first half and has five turnovers can you believe it has happened to them you know one thing 
Ron, this is the fourth year that we've been together broadcasting University of Miami football, and Miami has always had a sluggish first half of their first game. If you'll remember, That's right. last year against the University of Louisville, they were behind. The year before against the University of Louisville in the Orange Bowl, they were behind early on and were able to come from behind. They've always been a tough second-half ball club. Right up the gut, first and ten. Uh, well, Howard isn't going to take any chances. He's going to run out the clock, get him in there, and say, let's go to work, guys. Here we are, down 14-3, to three, and they're just going to run the clock out, and that's going to be it. Well, at the 15-yard line, they don't want to take a chance on a fumble now as the seconds tick away. And uh, that is the end of the first half with the score. The University of Florida Gators 14 and the University of Miami Hurricanes 3. I notice Howard Schnellenberger comes over on the sidelines, exhorts all the guys to run into the locker room. He is clapping his hands, and he has not, he has not given up in any way. You don't give up when you're only 11 points down. They've been down more than that. And we're going to be back here in just a moment with the score at the end of the half. Florida, 14, the University of Miami, 3. Ron Harrison along with Jim Gallagher back at the University of Miami versus Florida Gators here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. A gorgeous day for football. The Gators coming in after a 31-7 loss in the season ender last year up in Gainesville. The Canes kicking a field goal with one second left to play. That set up all of the, all of the fuel that uh, has fired this rivalry here in the offseason. And it turns out for the first time in the history of these two teams meeting, they meet in the season opener and a tremendous grudge match situation set up. The Gators came in here red hot, ready to play. They have taken advantage of five University of Miami turnovers. And uh, as, if I check my stats out right, I think the Gators have only had one turnover, one interception by Rodney Bellinger of the University of Miami Hurricanes. And other than that, they have played opportunistic football. I don't think they have outplayed the University of Miami that much in the first half as far as uh, in actual, you know, hardcore football. But when it comes to the big plays, the University of Florida has outplayed Miami uh, tremendously here in the first half. Well, Howard Schnellenberger alluded to the fact that whoever wins is going to have to make six big plays. And this was in his Tuesday press conference, and he thought that that would be the difference. Now, he was hoping that the six big plays would come from the Hurricanes, and so far, they haven't really come up with a big, big play. Uh, we mentioned a little bit earlier the fact that Miami has always been a team that started slow in the first quarter of, of or any ball game that they have played at the beginning of the season. And so what we look for is Miami to pull out the stops here in the second half and to come out really roaring because they've got to with this fine Florida club up by a score of 14 to 3. All right. Well, we'll be back here to check out some more halftime activities in just a moment. Here at the Orange Bowl, the University of Florida Gators are leading the University of Miami Hurricanes 14 to 3 as we get into the third quarter. The ball is resting now at the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Hurricanes of Miami. Jim Kelly brings his club to the line. He's got receivers left and right. The Florida defense digs in. Kelly with a split backfield behind him. The give goes to Smokey Roan. Roan tries it off the right side and gets about three. David Galloway, the senior left tackle from Tampa, makes the stop for Florida. Second and seven ball at the 33-yard line here on the near side hash mark. The first give off was to Smokey Roan, who fought forward and uh, got to the 30-yard line. And so that gave the Miami Hurricanes a first down. It's second and seven at the 33. Dropping back to throw is Jim Kelly. And he's got Smokey Roan coming out of the backfield. Smokey is at the 45 and fights for yardage to the 47-yard line. Fernando Jackson making the tackle for Florida. Just into the third quarter. Smokey Roan picks up the first down. How many yards can we check? How many yards has Roan got rushing today? We need that stat. We'll have that coming up. Very he needed just 24 yards man. to become the 18th University of Miami football player to pick up 1,000 yards rushing in his career. So he has got 29 yards rushing so far today, and he has 
hit the 1,000-yard mark in his career at the University of Miami. The give was to Speedy Neal, and he went to the 49-yard line before Wilbur Marshall made the stop. So Speedy picks up two yards. It'll be second and eight for the Miami Hurricanes, and they're trailing in this game. They've got to put points on the board right here. Florida was able to score two first-half touchdowns and go out front 14-3. Miami drew first blood with a Danny Miller field goal. A 42-yarder. But the story of the first half is five University of Miami turnovers and an opportunistic Florida Gator team that has put 14 points on the board. Kelly throws, and he's got Hobbs, and Hobbs is down to the 41-yard line of Florida for another Miami first down. Wilbur Marshall makes the tackle for Florida. I think what you're going to see the second half in talking with some of the University of Miami coaches as they came back up to the booth is just to go back to the bread and butter stuff that the University of Miami does so well and those little short high percentage passes are the things that Kelly throws so well and completes with such a high percentage. So now they are, do they have a timeout? No, they just had a timeout to get an injured player off the field, number 81 for the University of Florida. And that would be Randy Clark, a big six foot, 205 pound sophomore from Venice, Florida. He is off, doesn't appear to be hurt badly. Here come the Canes now with first and 10. At the 41 yard line of Florida, Kelly pitches to Hobbs. Hobbs sweeps here on the near side and is hit and brought down at the 35 yard line of Florida, but there's a flag on the play at the 41. 11.38 well, to play here in the third quarter. I saw the flag go down, but I didn't see who it was on. It was thrown by the back judge, or by the line judge, rather. And we'll have to wait and see. 11.38 left here in the third quarter. We're early in the second half. It was a holding call against the University of Miami. And I believe it was on John Kenai. So that's going to move the ball back across the 50 into Miami territory at the 49 and now Mark Cooper has checked into the ball game at tight end and Glenn Dennison has checked out first and 20 ball on the 49 yard line for Miami they're on the near side hash mark so they've got wide side to their left Kelly dropping to throw and he's got Rocky belt and Rocky could not hang on to the football under a lot of pressure Great defensive play by Bruce Vaughn, who also has an interception to his credit from Largo, Florida, 175-pound junior, and uh, he knocks the ball down, so it's an incompleted pass at this point. Second and 20 with the ball on the 49-yard line for the Miami Hurricanes. Brodsky has now come out of the football game, and Mike Rodrigue is going in. Brodsky and Rodrigue have been alternating at the receiver position this afternoon. Hobbs the up back and uh, Mark Rush at the top of the eye for the Miami Hurricanes. Dropping back to throw is Kelly. He throws and he's got Belk at the 30. Belk's down to the 26 yard line. Boy, that was a bullet thrown to Rocky Belk. He's brought down by Ivory Curry, but what a great grab by Rocky Belk of a bullet thrown by Jim Kelly. And we've got this one on replay. Let's look at it. Little play action, fakes to uh, Rush going up through the middle and then delivers a bullet right here. Look at, great catch by Belk, look at that. All right. Big so, first down, they'll now be on the 26 yard line, make it first and 10 to go for the University of Miami. And they finally are getting on the move and going back to the stuff they do so well. And the thing that's impressing me now is the protection that Kelly's getting behind that offensive line. They're blocking out there in front of him and uh, the Gators aren't getting much rush on. If they don't put some rush on, Kelly can sit back there and throw all afternoon long. First and 10 for the Canes at the 26-yard line of Florida. Slot offense, the slot would be to the left side. The pitch goes to Smokey Roan, and he cuts across the grain Ooh. and carries to, to the 25-yard line. So mm -hmm. he picks up just a yard on the carry. Fernando Jackson for the University of Florida made the tackle. Fernando Jackson made a very big tackle because Rowan was breaking to the inside and there was nobody up the slot. He had a clear shot at the goal line. Had he broken free from uh, Fernando Jackson, he could have had a big game play right there. Big game. Brodsky and Smokey Rowan come out of the ball game now. Mike Rodriguez is in along with Mark Rush and the fullback remains Chris Hobbs. They split the backfield and receivers are left and right as Kelly drops back to throw on second and nine. Kelly throws, and it is complete. He's got Rodriguez. Rodriguez at the five, 
and he he's in there. Very close to a touchdown. They say he was brought down right at the one foot line. Oh, I don't that was it. very close to a touchdown. What, what a gutty carry by Rodrigue after he caught the football. Well, I'll say it again. They're not putting any rush on Kelly. The offensive line is playing super football in the second half, and Kelly's got all day back there to throw. Look at him. Nobody on him, and you give that guy time to throw. He's got a rifle arm, and boom, there's Rodrigue. Great catch, great determination, and he sees the goal line, and he sprints for it and just about makes it. He's about one inch short. So it is first and goal at the one-foot line for the University of Miami. 9.47 to play in the third quarter. The Canes are trailing Florida 14 to 3. I'm going to get a little bit ahead of ourselves here, Jim, and what if the University of Miami scores? Do they go for the three or for the two-point play or do they go for the single point after? We'll see in a moment. All right, just, we got to score watch Howard first, Stellenberger. Right? If he holds up those fingers and says two, then you know what he's going to do. Speedy Neal, number 38 in the backfield, along with Lorenzo Smokey Roan, number 46. Kelly straight ahead on the quarterback sneak scores. The Hurricanes are in the end zone now. Now we have a 14 to 9 ball game. I think it's a smart play on the part of Coach Howard Schnellenberger to put the big kid in there. Uh, Speedy Neal, 247 pounder at fullback. And they're going to look for him to carry the ball, and then uh, Kelly sneaks it over. Good play, good strategy, but they are going to go for two. For two. I thought they would, because if they get this. They'll be down by uh, three, and they can tie it with a field goal. So Howard pulling all the stops here as the University of Ga Florida Gators came to play, jump off to a big 14 to three lead, and now it's 14 to nine with the two-point conversion coming up. That play, uh, 13 plays, 83 yards, the best sustained drive that the Hurricanes have had for the afternoon. So the Hurricanes are gonna go for two. 14 to 9 is the score. Florida Gators leading the Miami Hurricanes, and Jim Kelly takes his club to the line. He's got the two big backs behind him now, Rush and Speedy Neal. Kelly drops the throw. Rolling under some pressure, throws, and it is yes. to Rocky Belt, number 20. Rocky Belt coming across off the right side, running the quick out and in pattern is right there and Kelly threads the needle on that one and Miami gets two and so it's now there's a flag on the play. Well, Wait just a, a moment, there is the a play. flag on the play and we'll see what the call is in a All minute. All right, we are gonna take a break for a commercial. Let's keep it right here for a minute and see what this call is. We're gonna stay with it here for a moment and see what the call is. It is against, against Florida. Florida. It was declined and so the two points stand and now it is a 14 to 11 ball game as Miami has come out with a vengeance in the third quarter. And there's a timeout on the field. Florida leading Miami 14 to 11, 922 left in the third quarter. We'll be back in a moment. Ron Harrison along with Jim Gallagher back at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. 76,000 plus a jam-packed crowd at the Orange Bowl on a beautiful fall day. The season opener for both the Miami Hurricanes and the Florida Gators. Tremendous interstate rivalry. It's a 14 to 11 football game. University of Miami comes out. Kelly on a one yard sneak, scores, then a courageous play. Kelly to belt for a two pointer makes it 14 to 11. Three point difference, here comes the kick. Danny Miller kicks it high. Florida takes it on the 12 at the 15, fighting for yardage as he goes across the 27 yard line. Shannon Birch on the return for the Florida Gators, and Dithart makes the tackle for Miami. You think there isn't some intensity on that field now. They are hitting as hard as any two teams I've seen go at each other in a long, long time. Crunch, says the scoreboard, and that's exactly what happened. They're crunching each other down there. Kelly is having a pretty fine afternoon. He's uh, 15 out of 23, 215 yards, one touchdown, but he's had four intercepted. He's a quarterback now, the sophomore from Lakeland, Florida, for the Florida Gators. Split backfield behind Pease, and he drops the throw, and he throws that little swing pass out to Lang. Lang upfield, he's at the 45, and he is sprinting hot from behind, finally, by Greg Brown, the linebacker. Lang is a sophomore, 5'7", 166, a little scooter from Miami, and big Greg Brown 
All was right. able to run him down. They're going to have to bring the corners up and start cutting this play down because now you see Lippitt came up a little bit, but he still wasn't up close enough to stop this play. And they've just, this has been their bread and butter play. They've got one touchdown to Spencer Jackson on this this afternoon. It's been their best ground gainer. Other than that, they haven't done anything offensively. First and 10 for the Gators at the 42 of Miami. The give off goes to Jones. Jones sweeping, and he is hit and brought down as he turns upfield at the 42 yard line by Lester Williams. Also, Scotty Nicholas in on that stop, and Fred Marion with an assist, too. Carey was to the 37 yard line of Miami. So, second and four now for the Gators as we come back with 8.41 to play here in the third quarter. University of Miami head coach Howard Snellenberger, the gentleman here with the tie. Slot offense now for the Gators with their slot out to the right up at the top of your screen. At a split backfield behind Pease. Pease draw gives play. to Jones on the draw, and it was diagnosed by Big Lester Williams. Makes the tackle at the 35-yard line. All right, here comes a big third down play. It's going to be third about two. And the Canes have to stop him here, maybe force him to go for a field goal, although I would think, well, leading 14 to 11, if they do stop him, they may go for it. Uh, this is a football game. It's been a battle mm. all afternoon. Slot offense and receivers left and right for Florida. They're letting the stops all hang out. Third and two, Miami's defense gets set. The give goes to John L. Brown, and let's see if he made it. To the right, off the right side, the tackle made by Big Lester Williams, who was right there at the line of scrimmage to make the stop. They're going to measure. It's going to be very, very close, and they're going to call for the chains to take a look at it. 7.42, third quarter remaining, and 14 to 11, Florida leading Miami. Miami came back with the first blood here in the second half. Went for the two-point conversion. Kelly to Belk. They converted, made it 14 to 11. Three-point difference, a field goal separating these two teams. And then Florida comes back utilizing that little swing pass to the outside as they've done all afternoon. And uh, they're making a work for them. They do that very, very well. Lester Williams, three tackles on the last three plays, and they are short. Lester Williams brings them up short by about two to three feet. And now it is fourth down. Do they go for it or do they go for the three? I think they're going to go for the first down. They're going to go for it. It's fourth and short yardage at the 33-yard line of Miami. And the Florida Gators are going to go for it on fourth down. Got the big back James Jones in there. I don't think that Peace will try to quarterback it. I think he's going to give it to Jones. We'll wait and see. Waiting for the snap now is Pease with a split backfield behind him. Pease into the line. He tries it. I think he's got it, Jim. Don't want to call it yet. Oh. Tony Ciccolo and Bob Nelson made the stop for Miami. They had about, from the way it looked from the field, about a foot to go, and they're going to call for the chains to come out again. Although on the far sideline, I can see that they flipped the marker over to say first down. Yeah, I think they've got but it. That can be first down for Florida or first down yeah. for Miami. Yeah. We'll see now when they stretch out that chain whether or not they've got it. So Florida gets the first down. Wayne Peace keeps the ball. Big 6'2", 217-pound quarterback from Lakeland, Florida. Just a sophomore. He's got a lot of great years in front of him. He's the guy that almost engineered an upset over mighty Georgia last year. Yes, sir. First and 10 on the 32 now. Florida's now picked up eight first downs to 14 for the University of Miami. Pease gives to John L. Brown. Brown cuts back. He is hit by Nicholas and also hit by Tony Ciccolo. Short yardage, and he's brought down short of the 30. It's interesting to note that this afternoon, Scott Nicholas, I don't know when he did it, but early in the game, he's broke a record once thought beyond reach here at the University of Miami. The most tackles and most tackle participations record, which was set by All-American Ted Hendricks, now playing for the Oakland Raiders at end. Ted Hendricks made 227 tackles at end and was in on 347 tackle participations. Nicholas started out today with 226 tackles. He only needed one and 332 tackle participations. He's going to break all of Hendricks' records here at the University of Miami on tackle participations, too, before the year is over. He's already broke the tackling record set by Ted Hendricks. And, Ted, <laughs> if you're uh, watching right now and there's a strong chance he is, that's it. All right, we'll be back here in a moment with the score. Florida 14, Miami 11, back in a moment.
interception by Ronnie Lippett. A pass from Wayne Pease intended for Broughton Lang, intercepted by Ronnie Lippett, and what a big interception that turned out to be as the Gators were driving on Miami. And Here. now that has given the Hurricanes the football at the 17. Bad pass thrown by Wayne, Wayne Pease, and Lippett was right there. In fact, there were a whole lot of orange jerseys right there, and Lippett is a big play man. I, I think that's the thing we can say about Ronnie Lippett. That's the thing they like about him. He makes the big clutch play when they need it, and he does it again. Okay, first down, Keynes now on the 17-yard line as they thwart a big Florida drive here. And here come the Canes again. A split backfield behind Kelly. He's got two tight ends in, and he gives off to Chris Hobbs, and Hobbs is stacked up as he hits the line of scrimmage right away by the middle of the Florida line. I want to mention the, this afternoon that this afternoon's football game is being dedicated by the University of Miami to George Gallette, who served uh, this school for over 40 years as their sports information director. And you talked a little while ago of Ted Hendricks. Well, over the years, Miami's had many All-Americans. Hendricks among them, and uh, many of them do credit George Gallette with getting out the word to the nation's press that brought them All-American honors. And George passed away last spring. It was a great loss to the university, so they're dedicating this game to George. The pitch goes to Smokey Roan, and Smokey is hit by the left side of the Florida defensive unit, and Fernando Jackson led the tacklers for the Gators. 5.48 to play here in the third quarter. Florida up on Miami, 14 to 11. Somebody is down for the Hurricanes. I think it could be uh, it's it is Kelly. Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly is down. So oh if he comes out of the football game, that will mean that Mark Richt will go in. They're working on his leg. It appears to be a knee injury, and let's hope it isn't. Here comes Howard Schnellenberger himself out. It is a knee injury, we are told. And they are looking at this very, very closely. If this were pro football, they would refer to Kelly as the franchise because he is a tremendous passer. Of course, we talked about the University of Florida Gators having two great quarterbacks in Hugo and in Wayne Pease. The University of Miami, also a great two quarterback club with a youngster backing up Jim Kelly by the name of Mark Rick, who is a long ball thrower and a tremendous passer. And a guy who is been relegated to the backup role, he'd be starting on a lot of other teams. On most major universities, squads, yes. he would. Uh, Kelly is a tremendously talented and gifted athlete, and so that means that Mark R uh, Rick must take a back seat here. He's 6'1", weighing 86. He's a junior and played at Boca Raton, which is about 35 miles north of Miami on the coast, and um, is, as Ron says, a fine passer. He can throw the long ball very, very well. Well, they're really taking a long time to look over Jim Kelly and see what the problem is. And let's hope it is nothing serious. 14 to 11 is the score. Florida is leading Miami in the Orange Bowl in the third quarter. 543 to play in this the third period. The situation is this, that Miami has the football third down, nine yards to go on their own 18-yard line. So they're, as Ron says, working over Kelly, and uh, they are, they're working on Kelly, and it looks like they're going to get him up, and we'll be able to see when he comes across the field what the situation is as far as uh, he is concerned. He is getting a great, great hand from this crowd. He's a popular young man with a lot of personality, and makes a lot of television and radio appearances and interviews very in very the Miami area very, very, very important to note though Jimmy is walking off but even though he's getting some help he is walking off it means that it is not as, as serious as uh, originally thought when he went down and when he went down holding the knee everybody thought oh my goodness first game of the season and Kelly goes down but he did walk off and we can hope that it's nothing serious all right there is Rick in at quarterback 186 pounds junior 6-1 Split backfield of Speedy Neal and Roan, and Rick drops back the throw. He throws, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Mark Cooper, the tight end, out on the left flat, but fell incomplete. Wilbur Marshall was the coverage man for Florida. That brings up fourth down nine on the 18 of Miami, so the Canes will kick away. Mark Rick not happy with himself. It appeared again that with the tremendous heat here that his hands were slippery and the ball slipped off his hand. We saw that from Kelly earlier in the afternoon. And once from Wayne Peace. LaBelle back to do the punting. 
consistent punter, averages about 40 yards per boot, has not booted all that well this afternoon. So LaBelle is waiting for the snap standing on about the three-yard line. And he boots it off the side of his foot. It goes high and is caught at the 48-yard line by the University of Florida. And so they will put it in play. And Curry was the man that took the ball down, a 30-yard kick by Greg LaBelle. So that gives Florida excellent field position at the 48 of Miami and really puts the pressure on Miami's defensive unit. Look at that crowd here for college football this afternoon in Miami. Everybody is waiting for the attendance to be announced, and of course, uh, that's the big thing. The record attendance for the University of Miami was set with a Notre Dame game several years back, back in 1967. The record crowd for the Orange Bowl with the University of Miami, 77,265. Jones with a carry for the Florida Gators and gets about half a yard. Nelson and Flanagan make the stop for Miami. No gain on the play, second and 10 for the Florida Gators, and they're in Miami territory. Jim Kelly has just gone out with what appears to be uh, a bang on the ankle or knee, and we'll see if he'll be able to go back in on the next series. A split backfield behind Pease, and he's got receivers left and right. Miami throwing up a four-man front, playing the linebackers right in the gaps. The give off oh. goes to the fullback, and he stuck him. Bob Nelson hits Lorenzo Hampton behind the line of scrimmage. Big Bob, the 6'3", 250-pound senior from Maryland. Brought him down behind the line at the 49, so it'll be third and 11 coming back for the Gators. 4.15 to play third quarter. Florida up 14 to 11. Mm, what a football game, huh? Three-point difference. It's been a war on that field this afternoon. All these young men have been playing with intensity. A slot offense now, and the slot would be to the right side to the top of your screen for Florida. Miami going now with the three-man front, dropping the ends off as linebackers. He's to throw, and he throws, and it is intercepted on the far side. It was intended for Spencer Jackson. Intercepted David by Jefferson. David Jefferson. 6'2", 220-pound senior from Hialeah. So there's a big interception and a big play by the defensive unit. Well, here we come out in the second half. The University of Miami, five turnovers in the first half, and now Florida comes out, and they start to play giveaway. That's the second interception in the third quarter. Lippitt intercepted Wayne Peace on the 17-yard line moments ago to uh, thwart a Florida drive, and now Jefferson comes out and intercepts, and he takes the ball on the Miami 42-yard line, and it'll be the Canes first and 10. So another Florida drive is stopped, and the defense is really turned on for the Canes here in the second half. Rick fumbles and drops on the fumble behind the line of scrimmage at the 41-yard line as he loses a yard, so it'll be second and 11 coming back. In all fairness to Mark Rick, he is coming in on a tough situation. This is a real pressure uh, situation. When we say pressure, it's a real boiler out there, and this guy comes in. He, uh, he comes in after watching all of this intensity and then is expected to come in and just take over, and he's still cold. It's going to take him two, three plays to get acclimated, and then he's going to be all right. They're working on Jim Kelly along the sidelines. Mike O'Shea, who's the trainer for Miami, former trainer for the Baltimore Colts, working on his knee right now. Rick throws out in the flat to Belt. Belt cannot hang on to the football, and it goes as an incomplete pass. Rocky Belt was absolutely wide open. Had he caught the ball, he would have been long gone. There again, you have a quarterback change, and that's what causes that. Mark Rick throws the ball much harder, a much harder throw than Jim Kelly. Kelly has a soft touch on the ball. Rick throws a bullet. And Belk got hit right in the hands, and the guy does not have stone hands. You've seen him make some tremendous catches today. That was just the change in quarterbacks. And again, once they get acclimated, they're going to be okay. And I'm not making excuses for the Kings, just pointing out some things that are happening because uh, the number one quarterback goes down. Hobbs and Roan, the setbacks behind Mark Rick. Slot offense, the slot would be to the left side, and now the tight end, Dennison, comes in motion. Rick again drops back, and he looks, and he throws, and it is intended for Brodsky, but it's high. And goes as incomplete. So Rick lets it go a little hard and a little high, and it's not a catchable ball, and Bruce Vaughn was the coverage man on that for Florida. Brodsky was right there in the open. 
Jim Kelly's going to be back in the football game, I'll tell you that. Uh, he's walking around down there trying to get that knee, trying to work the, uh, the bugs out of it or the pain out of it so he can play and have some mobility. And uh, you can see him running. They must not think it's too serious or they wouldn't have him running on it. On fourth down, LaBelle is back to punt for Miami. Standing at the 26-yard line, Ivory Curry will be the return man for Florida. A high, wobbly kick by LaBelle, and it bounces out of bounds along the far sideline. So the Gators will put the football in play in pretty good field position at about the... Looks like they're going to spot it down at the 33-yard line on the far side hash mark. With the score, the University of Florida 14, the University of Miami 11 in the third quarter, 2.49 left to play. We'll be back in a moment. We're back with action at the Orange Bowl on second down. Wayne Pease of the Florida Gators drops back, and Nelson really puts the pressure on him here. Nelson puts the pressure on him. Isaiah West comes in to put the final blow on him, but he does manage to get rid of the ball, and it goes as an incompleted pass. But there's a flag at the 30-yard line, so uh, they're we'll gonna, see what that's for in a moment. I think they're going to lose some yardage no matter what. The legal procedure, they're going to decline it, and that's going to make it third down and about six or seven to go. Let's make it third and six. Give them the benefit of the doubt. So Lane Peace will bring the Florida Gators out with a 14 to 11 lead. 2.38 left in the third quarter. Two turnovers for the Florida Gators so far in the third quarter. The University of Miami had five in the first half, and that's why they were behind 14 to three at halftime. But they are now back in it after a touchdown, a one yard sneak by Kelly, and a two point conversion, Kelly to Belt. Miami digging in now with a three man front dropping off the ends as linebackers. Pease dropping back the throw, and he throws, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Lang, who was running a post pattern and getting heavy coverage by Lippitt and Fred Marion, and goes as incomplete. I think Pease dropped back and, and saw that he was going to get, might possibly get intercepted, so he let the ball fly. Well, I wonder about that too, Jim. Now watch him here. He's, uh, he's taking a look at everybody. He, actually, he threw the ball. I don't think he saw his receiver. I think he got blocked out at the last second when he released the ball, but he has not been effective at all the second half compared to the first half. More cabbage kicks for the University of Great Florida. Kick. It is high. It's going to be fielded by, no, they're going to let it roll into the end zone. Woo. Fred Marion let that one roll into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. And, and they just, got lucky, too, because it yes. almost rolled out at the 1. It almost went out right at the flag there. That was a 63-yarder, Mr. Harrison. Boy, not a, bad, not a bad kick at all, huh? Boy, the Canes could use a kick like that. LaBelle has had an off day, averaging only about 30 yards today. 25 yards in his last punt. He shanked that one, too. And I would imagine that he will be doing a little work in practice this week. I think so, too. Now, first and 10 at the 20-yard line for the Miami Hurricanes. And Rick remains in at quarterback, a split backfield of Roan and Hobbs behind him, and receivers left and right. Ball at the 20-yard line. Rick gives to Smokey Roan. Roan outside, across the 20, and fights up to the 27-yard line. A nice carry by the little guy. Vito McKeever makes the tackle for Florida. So Lorenzo Smokey Roan with a nice carry. Last year, he had an average of 4.4 yards per carry. You get the feeling watching this game, and we are only in the third quarter, that it is going to come down to the fourth quarter all the way. It could be one of those two, three-point ball games that could swing either way, and it might swing on the last play of the game. It's that type of game today. Rick drops back to throw, and lets it fly, intended for Belk along the far sideline, and it falls as incomplete. Vito McKeever, number 36, giving heavy coverage to Belk along the far sideline. You can see as Rick drops back and Rick's he's looking. All day. And the offensive line doing a great job of giving him protection. And McKeever was really putting the pressure on Belk, but it was a ball that looked like it was going to be out of bounds anyway. Belk had to come back for it. Ball remains at the 27. It's third and three on the far side hash mark. It's Brodsky 43 who will be splitting to the bottom of your screen to the right side. Rick is 0 for 4 so far. Receivers left and right. And Rick drops back again. Getting pressured, now he runs. 
and gets the first down. He's across the 35, and Greg out of bounds along the far sideline at the 44-yard line by Fernando Jackson, but he gets the first down for Miami. Well, Mark Rick came in in a tough situation. He threw the first pass he threw into the ground. Then he came back. He overthrew a couple and uh, didn't look too hot in his first series of downs, and I heard a couple of boos from the crowd here. But there was a gutsy play by Mark Rick, and he can run like a halfback, as you saw there. That's one thing about both Rick and Kelly. They are not fragile merchandise. The, both guys are big, they're strong, and they can run with the ball, and they both got halfback speed. And a great play by Rick. Heads up running, and he comes up with a big first down. 17-yard carry for Mark Rick. First and 10 on the 44 for the Miami Hurricanes. They're in their own territory driving on Florida. Rick's give goes to Roan. Roan. Forward to the 45-yard line, a yard for Smokey Roan, Wilbur Marshall, 6'1", 229, a sophomore from Titusville, number 88, makes the tackle for Florida. The crowd is rather subdued right now. Cleveland goes into the ball game, number 19, for the University of Miami. Great Cleveland. To, great to see this Orange Bowl full. Roan has picked up 38 yards this afternoon on 11 carries. He and Speedy Neal are the setbacks behind Rick, who is dropping out a throw. And he is under tremendous pressure and dragged down way behind the line at the 31-yard line. Mark Rick had all kinds of time to throw. He was back. But you've got to give credit here to the secondary. I don't know if we can see it or not. He had all kinds of time. Now he sets up. He's got two, three seconds back there. The secondary for the Gators did a tremendous job. There wasn't a receiver open. They had them all covered like blankets. They were just covered up, and uh, poor Mark Richt had no choice but to hit the ball. A 12-yard loss, so it's third and 21 at the 33 for Miami as the six seconds tick away towards the end of the third quarter. Here come the Canes now with Rick number nine at the line. See if we can get this play underway. Six, five, four, and counting. He's Three. For the snap. We did it. The give is to Smokey Rowan. Smokey goes right up the middle and across the 45-yard line. Enough yardage for the first down, but there are flags on the field. It's going to be Mark Cooper, I think, offsides. Big number 85. I saw some motion there. The big 6'5", 232-pound junior out of Miami. I think he was offsides, and that's going to negate a great play and a great, great play up the middle by Smokey Rowan. It is a legal procedure. Offsides against the University of Miami, so they're talking now to the Florida defensive captain to see what they want to do. Florida leading Miami 14 to 11 as we get ready to go to the fourth quarter of action at the Orange Bowl. A crowded Orange Bowl this afternoon for college football with a great crowd in here to see the Hurricanes and the Gators. They decline it, and it's going to be now fourth down. Let's see what they're doing here. Fourth and nine. Fourth and nine, okay. For the University of Miami, so that means that they are... That's a surprising call. Going to have to kick away. That was a surprising call. I would have thought they would have taken it and forced them back and uh, counted on their defense with the new quarterback in there not to come up with anything. But Pell not taking any chances on a big play on the part of Rick and... Uh, Decides to decline the penalty, let the game stand, and still it'll be fourth down, so they're going to have to kick it away. And, of course, don't forget, here we have the quarter. Uh, we're at the end of the quarter, and it's a new quarter. Miami is trailing by three right now, 14 to 11. The Florida Gators are up. They quarter. got both their touchdowns in the first half. Quarter snuck away from us there, as a matter of fact, and uh, we are now at the break between the third and the fourth quarter, and... Uh, it's still going to be fourth down and about eight to go, and the Canes are going to have to punt away. The Bell, for the first time this afternoon, will have the wind at his back, and maybe he can do something with that. There is a slight breeze blowing down on the field out of the uh, northeast. He'll be standing at about the 30-yard uh, line waiting for the snap. It'll come from the 45, and we are now beginning the fourth quarter of action at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Greg LaBelle waiting for the snap. Ivory Curry, the return man for Florida. LaBelle boots it away, and it is high and long, and Curry takes it and falls forward at the 14-yard line. There's a flag on the play, though, at the 45. I think somebody from Florida might have jumped off sides. If that is the case, you know the Canes will take the call. That'll make it fourth down and about uh, three. 
Aha. <laughs> that could change things right there. 42 yard boot that time by LaBelle. They, de they declined the penalty, Ron, and so the University of Florida will have the football and they'll have it at their own 14 yard line as we begin the fourth quarter. We're just into this last period of action at Miami's Orange Bowl. First and 10 for the Gators. You know, we talk about this rivalry. Why is it so great this year? Well, kind of the grudge match feature build up tremendous rivalry already, but this is the first time both teams have had a shot at doing something nationally. Both teams coming off bowl victories last year. The South has, turns out some tremendous football teams and the state of Florida has got three of the best in Florida State, Florida and the University of Miami. A new quarterback is now in for the University of Florida Gators, Bob Huco, 6'3", 193, a junior from Hatboro, Pennsylvania. His give off was to the tailback, Lorenzo Hampton, and uh, Hampton's carry was to the 19 yard line, so it'll be second down and five when the Gators come out of the huddle. Huco was the fellow that led the Gators to four straight victories last year and That's then was right. injured against LSU. And uh, that was when Pease came in and did a great job towards the end of the season. Florida with a slot offense and receivers left and right. Huco's give goes off to Jones. Jones turns up field fighting for yardage, trying to get that first down as he carries forward. 6'3", 236, and he runs like a halfback, built like a fullback. Huco, now here's the handoff. Huco comes out of uh, football country, Hatboro, Pennsylvania. And uh, as Jim said, a standout performer. He injured his knee in the LSU game in the fourth quarter, had to have surgery, missed the remainder of the season, and that's when Wayne Pease came in and uh, did such a great job for them. But uh, he really has come back in the spring. He's fully ready for the 81 season. And uh, just a tremendous player. And as, as we have said, either Huco or Wayne Peace could be first string quarterback for this team, much like uh, Jordan, Jordan and Woodham for uh, Florida, Florida State. State a couple years back. But uh, at any rate, he is in there. Wayne Peace, very ineffective, throwing two interceptions in the third quarter and uh, did not have the great uh, poise he had in the first half. First and 10 at the 24 for the Gators as they just picked up a first down. Huco's got a split backfield behind him and receivers left and right. The give goes to Jones, and Jones is dragged down at the 27-yard line. By the way, prior to that carry, Jones had picked up 63 yards this afternoon, and the Gators' total rushing output was 84. Well, I think you're seeing something here as the game wears on, and we are now in the fourth quarter. The University of Miami defense, is, this is something you will see all year long if you watch the University of Miami. The defense gets stronger as the game goes on. It's like watching Tom Seaver or Steve Carlton pitch a game. They just get, they might give up a little bit in the early going, but then they settle down and they get rough and tough and the yards come grudging. Second and seven at the 27 for Florida. Huco drops the throw now. He's a left-handed passer, throws one up high, and it is incomplete. Downfield for the University of Florida Gators. Number was their wideout Steve Miller. And Miller, the 5'11", 185-pound freshman, had Ronnie Lippett beat, but the ball was just a little too far. That was a, kind of a hesitating type play. Huco hesitated at uh, the quarterback slot for a moment or two, and uh, the receiver also did a little stutter step and then turned it on, and I think it caught the uh, Hurricane defense off guard. Good play on the part of the Gators. Miller, by the way, runs the 40 in 4-3. <laughs> He should run at Calder the way yeah. he picks him up and lays him down. Slot offense to the left side now, and Huco, the quarterback for Florida, on third and seven at the 27. Halfback option. Halfback option pass, and Half it is bobbled on the far side by Mike Malarkey, the junior tight end from Fort Lauderdale, and so that will bring up fourth down seven at the 27 yard line. Well, he had a first down, but he dropped the ball. That was another good play, halfback option. A little razzle-dazzle by Charlie Pell. It worked, except he dropped the ball. When Miami tried it a little bit ago, they got an interception when Mark Rush threw the ball. Joe Borakavich will kick for the University of Florida. Now, he's kicking into the open end of the uh, Orange Bowl here. There is a bit of a win coming out of the open end. Let's see if that affects his percentage. He boots it away high. It's going to be fielded by Fred Marion at the 32. And he cuts forward at the 35 and goes to the 39-yard line before he is brought down. So Miami gets the football back now, first and 10. And uh, Rick remains in the game at quarterback at the 39-yard line, first and 10 for the Canes with 13 minutes to play in the game. 
42-yard kick by Morikawa. Florida is up 14 to 11. Well, the University of Miami now has good field position fourth quarter and will be back in a moment. No, we're going to stay with it, okay? We're going to stay right with it, I am told. And here is Mark Richt at the line, receivers left and right on the split backfield. Richt looks, throws out on the flat, and he's got Brodsky. Brodsky bobbles oh, into the air, it's intercepted by Florida on the far sideline at the 45. Bruce Vaughn is right there, number 47, as Brodsky bobbles it up, and Vaughn just takes it right down and falls forward at the 44-yard line. And so Florida gets a big break here as they get the football in Miami territory, and once again, the pressure's on Miami's defense. Miami goes to that little swing pass that's been so effective for Florida, out to Brodsky. Brodsky bobbles the ball as he's hit the minute he uh, receives the ball, and coming up from his corner position, Bruce Vaughn makes the second interception of the afternoon. First and 10 at the 43 for the Florida Gators. Hugo at quarterback. His give off goes to the trailing back, John L. Brown. And he gets about a yard or so on that carry before Tony Ciccolo, the nose tackle for Miami, brings him down. Brown is a 5'10", 196 pound junior from Gainesville. A fine all around athlete. Six turnovers for the University of Miami with that interception this afternoon. And that was one of those freak plays. You can't really blame that on the quarterback. He put the ball right into Brodsky's hands, and he got hit the moment he caught it, and uh, it bobbled, and up comes the cornerback, and he just picked it out of midair, and big interception. Second and nine for the Gators in the Miami 42. Miami with three down linemen. Cuco dropping, looking, and throws, and it is incomplete. A lot of pressure on there, too, by the Miami defense. Tried to throw that little look in, but Miami was putting the pressure on there, and it might have bounced off somebody's fingers. Isn't it amazing the way the personality of these two teams has changed, even in the style of plays called with the different quarterbacks? Uh, it's like watching two different football teams. It's like watching a different team with Hugo in there. It's like watching a different team with Rick in there, quarterback for the Hurricanes. There's Howard on the sidelines. Coach Howard Schnellenberger has really turned the program around at the University of Miami, 14-8 and eight in his two seasons, entering his third year and he has just brought football fever to Miami. Hugo dropping to throw on third and nine to Jones. Jones throws a halfback option to Malarkey. It's complete to the 32-yard line, and Florida's got a first down. Well, David Jefferson comes up. Of course, uh, he didn't really make the stop. All he had to do was put a hand on the man, but they saw something when they tried that first time. Malarkey was wide open. They saw the hole there. They said, let's go back to that. They didn't defense us very well on it. We'll catch him off guard on it. They throw it going the other direction, and they pick up a big first down. That's the first completion for Florida in their last eight passes this afternoon. They had seven straight incompletes going up to that. First and 10 on the 32 for the Florida Gators. They're up 14 to 11. Miami's defense being put to the test right now. Yuko gives to Jones. Jones trapped behind the line hit and brought down by Bob Nelson. Well, Huco is getting his first work since the third game last year when you look at it in actual combat conditions, and uh, he has not been all that impressive. They're not, they're not giving him anything really uh, big to do at this point, just uh, some short handoffs and a few short passes, but they haven't really put the ball up long yet with Huco in there. Well, he did the one. He overthrew it. Second and 10 at the 32-yard line for Florida. Receivers left and right. Bob Huco, a left-handed quarterback, in. Throws out in the flat, and it is incomplete. Rotten Lang was right there and uh, was sliding down and could not hang on to the football. Coverage man Isaiah West and Ronnie Lippett for Miami. So that brings up third down, 10 on the 32. 11 minutes, 9 seconds to play in the game. Florida leading by three points. Well, you watch this game. You know, we're three-point difference is all there is. One touchdown by either team could put it away at this point. And we're getting down there. 11 minutes left in the football game. Big third down play and a lot of yardage to pick up. Third and 10. Miami going with a four-man front now. And the give off goes to Jones. Jones brought down at the 32-yard line after a short game. Tony Ciccolo, the nose tackle, makes the stop. And there's a flag on the play. I think it's going to be against the University of Florida. And you can look for the University of Miami probably to decline it. It'll bring up a fourth down situation. It's the illegal motion, penalty, decline, and it's going to be fourth down, 10 to go, and it's going to be a, probably a field goal attempt. If so, it's going to be a long one. 
Let's here. see, where's the line of scrimmage? Here at the 31-yard uh, line. line yeah. All right, put it seven yards back. It'll be put on about the 39. It'll be a 49-yard attempt. Okay, they're going to spot it down on the 38, so it 48. will be a 48-yard right. attempt now by Brian Clark, 6'2", 198-pound senior from Sarasota, Florida, the place kicker for the Gators. There's the snap. The ball is on the way, and it is good. <laughs> Florida has just taken a 17 to 11 lead now on the University of Miami. Woo, great. So Miami's kick. got to score a touchdown. 48 yard kick. Just looking at it now, let's see if we can see the ball drop. It just dropped inside the uh, goal post. All right. So a great kick by Brian Clark. Seven plays. <laughs> Seven plays for the uh, Florida Gators, and they put a field goal on the board. With the score, 17-11, we'll be right back. The return for the University of Miami is going to give the Canes good field position at the 27-yard line, so it'll be first and 10 for the Canes. And uh, the University of Miami is trailing in this football game this afternoon by a score of 17 to 11. Mark Rick remains at quarterback, a split backfield with receivers left and right for the orange clad play Canes. Rick looking over the Florida defense. Florida putting the pressure on as Rick drops the throw. He gets it off, and it is oh. incomplete. Intended for Brodsky along the near sideline in front of the Miami bench and goes incomplete. Coverage man for Florida was Ivory Curry. So it'll be second down, 10 at the 27 for Miami. They've been double teaming Brodsky all afternoon long. He's had trouble getting free, and uh, he finally broke free that time, got over on the other side of the field, and Rick so far is doing what? He's uh, zero for six? Hmm. Hard to believe. Receivers left and right in a split backfield behind Mark Rick, the junior from Boca Raton, dropping the throw, and he is hit behind the line and brought down at the 15-yard line. Great penetration by the Florida defense. Glenn Myers gets in there to make the hit for the Gators. Well, watch him. Here comes Myers. Look at him spin around. He gets by his man, puts the hit on him, and then they finish him up. A whole swarming Florida Gator defense, and that's a big, big play. It puts the Canes back deep now. They lose, let's see, 10-15. It's going to be third and 22 to go, and that is a big third down situation, trailing. 17 to 11 with nine minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the clock running. Rodrigue is now in for Brodsky, and Rodrigue splits out to the left side. Mark Rick, the quarterback, third and 22 on the 15-yard line. Rick to throw, being pressured again, and throws long, and it's going to be incomplete. Almost intercepted by Florida, the two defensive backs came together in the backfield, Ivory Curry and Tony Lilly, and bumped each other. Mike Rodriguez was deep on that pattern. Rick got that throw off under a lot of pressure, and it goes incomplete. So that brings up fourth down, 22 ball on the 15, and Greg LaBelle has the challenge right now standing at the goal line. And I would bet you right now that Charlie Pellis has put the rush on the guy right now. He's punting from his goal line. We got him down in the corner. Let's put some pressure on him. So watch the rush now. Very, very pressure-laden kick for young Mr. LaBelle. Waiting for the snap, standing at the goal. No rush. He boots it away. Taken by Florida at the 45. Turns he's got a field. wide open field. And he's got the field wide open. As he goes along the sidelines, he is bumped out of bounds on the far side. And the man that made the tackle was Greg LaBelle at the 20-yard line. Ivory Curry with the return for Florida. James Boone and Greg LaBelle make the hit. So the Gators now have the football on the 20. It'll be first and 10, and Florida's up 17-11 on Miami. 
Not only the up 17 to 11, but they're in excellent field goal position. Three points here would put them up by nine. That means the University of Miami would have to score twice, a touchdown and a field goal, in order to catch them. That is very tough with nine minutes remaining. 38-yard punt, a 32-yard return. And going off the field for Florida is one of their injured players, number 51, and that is Newton. But uh, he was able to get off under his own power. Ball is on the far side hash mark right now, so that gives the Gators the sideline to the left and the wide side to the right. Slot offense to the left side with a split backfield behind the quarterback, and now Pease is back in at the quarterback position for the University of Florida. The give goes to James Jones, and he's trying to turn the corner upfield, and the University of Miami's defensive unit really puts the pressure on Lester Williams, the first one to reach him, number 73. Well, we have seen this University of Miami defense over the years, Jim, both of us, and we know, and I tell our USA Network fans this, <laughs> we know that they have a lot of character and can come up with a big play when they need to. They're really going to be tested in the early going here now. They've got David Jefferson down again, second time he's been down this afternoon. The rover back for the University of Miami, big kid, 6'2", 220 pounds, a senior out of Hialeah, Florida. Jones has 19 carries for 65 yards this afternoon. Here we go. Second and 12 when we come back at the 22-yard line. All right, they just announced the second or third largest crowd in University of Miami history, 73,876 here at the Orange Bowl this afternoon, and we'll be right back. Brown just made a great play on a first down run by the University of Florida's James Jones and stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 15 at the 25. Here are the Gators out of the huddle once again with receivers left and right and they go with the eye formation and Wayne Pease is in at quarterback. Pease again gives to Jones and Jones is stacked up by Miami at the inside the 25 at the 23. Charlie Pell taking no chances now. He wants his field goal kicker back out there. Brian Clark who just connected on a 48 yarder. Tony Ciccolo makes the stop there, but that is, uh, that's academic. They want to keep the ball in the middle of the field. They want to have Brian Clark set up. He's uh, making his spot right now. It's going to be a 39-yard attempt, and uh, he just put a 48-yarder right through the middle of the uprights. He's going to try it again, and the Canes are going to have to try to block this, or they're going to be down by nine points with about seven minutes remaining. His foot is into it, and it's on the way, and it is good. good. Florida is up by a score of 20 to 11. The Florida Gators leading the University of Miami now 20 to 11 with 7.16 to play in this football game. Here's the replay, and Clark hits it, and he just splits the uprights, as they say in the trade, right Soccer, through the middle. Soccer-style kicker drills it, and boy, is that a big field goal for Charlie Pell's Florida Gators as they come into a very hostile Orange Bowl. True, we have about 73,876, nearly 74,000 fans here. Nearly 30,000 of them are Gator fans. And uh, there you see a picture of dejection. His knee bandaged up in a splint. Jim Kelly on the sidelines, holding his head in his hands. And the situation is grim for the University of Miami Hurricanes. Seven minutes, 16 seconds remaining on the clock. Not only do they have to score, they got to get the ball back and score again. Not only do they have to score, they got to go for a two-point conversion. No, they don't go for a one-point conversion if they get the field goal right. They don't need a two-pointer, but they do need a touchdown and a field goal to win it. Touchdown, field goal, and an extra point. That's so the offense has really got its work cut out for it. Clark will be kicking off now, and the deep return man for Miami is Mark Rush from Fort Lauderdale. Clark gets ready to move to the football. It is high and deep. Short kick. Rush at the nine. At the 15, at the 20, up the middle, he's at the 25, across the 30 to the 31-yard line. And a um, nice stop put on Mark Rush by the University of Florida's Tolliver. Special teams man was able to bring him down, make the stop for the Gators. He almost broke it. Look at him go here. Rush, remember, went back for 100 yards against Mississippi State last year on a kick return, so he is capable of busting one. And uh, he gave Miami pretty good field position right there at the 31. 
with the first and 10 situation. Here come the Canes, and here's Mark Rick. Eye formation and receivers left and right. The up back is Chris Hobbs, and at the top of the eye, Lorenzo Smokey Roan. The pitch goes to Rome. Reverse. On the flank of reverse. Mike Rodriguez. Now he cuts back across the game. Upfield. He's at the 30, the 35, the 40. Running across field. He's at the 50 yard line and brought down at the 46 yard line. Ivory Curry makes the tackle and a great run by Mike Rodriguez. A great run, especially when you consider the fact that Florida saw the reverse coming all the way. Here they are. But the man couldn't make the tackle, number 88 for the University of Florida's. That would be uh, Wilbur Marshall. Couldn't make the stop. And then Roderick, who has halfback speed, turns it on. And look at him go. Some nice juke steps. And boy, he picks up a big first down. Puts it uh, on the 46-yard line at the University of Miami. First down, and here come the Canes again. Jim? At the 46, first down for the Canes. They're in their own territory driving now. Mark Richton at quarterback for the injured Jim Kelly. His give-off goes to Rush, and Rush is hit behind the line and brought down. A loss of a yard. Wilbur Marshall and uh, makes the tackle. That was the first first down under Mark Rick's direction this afternoon. We're looking at the clock, six minutes and 13, 12, 10, it's counting, and uh, they're getting down to that five-minute mark. Kane's got to put a point on the board quickly. Second and 11 for Miami at the 45-yard line. They're on their side of the midfield strike. Brodsky, 43, to the bottom of your screen. And Belk, number 20, at the top. Two setbacks behind Rick, and Rick drops the throw. He throws, and it is complete to Belk. And Belk is at the 30. He's going to go. He's going to go for a touchdown. 50. with a great catch. Just a great, great play. 55, 55 yards. big yards by the speedster, Rocky Belt, replacing All-American candidate, Pack Walker. Now, they gotta go, well, they don't have to go for the two-point conversion. They can go for the one. That's Rick's first completion of the day, and it was yeah, a good one. Yes, it was. Oh, my, my, my. Look at this. What a great, you know, when Belt catches it and he turns it on, you know he's going to outrun everybody. He has got blazing speed, and he knew he had it. They're going to go for the extra point because Danny Miller, the senior field goal kicker, who holds so many University of Miami records, is on the field. He's 5'10", 172, and a senior from Fluiston, number one. So they are going to go for the extra point. 20 to 17 That'll make is it the score. 20 and to 18. 18. And a field goal can win it for the Canes. Greg LaBelle will hold, and Danny Miller will attempt the extra point, and LaBelle is waiting for the snap on the 10. Miller boots it, and it's it is good. good. Woo. So we've got a 20 to 18 ball game in the Orange Bowl, 544 to play. Very important for the Canes to get on the board early. I said they've got to score. They can't keep running that clock down or the clock starts working against them. They only had the ball a minute, 32 seconds on that drive, and they put seven points on the board, which they had to do. Now, we talk about the Canes defense having character. We'll see how much character the Florida Gators offense has got, too, because they've got to go out and hold on to the football. Very important for Charlie Pell's team to hold on to the football now with time running down. Okay, we'll be back in a moment with the score. Florida 20, Miami 18. goes out of the end zone. There'll be no return. You the think the put it in adrenaline isn't pumping? Miller hasn't gotten a really dandy kickoff yet today. They come up with a big extra point by Miller, makes it 20 to 18, and then Miller steps up and boots it right out of the end zone. And, and the Canes, here's the kick. Watch him hit this ball now. Little guy, he's one of the smallest men on the team. And boy, it just almost sails through the uprights. Now then, here come the Gators. This crowd is going bananas. The First Miami defense being tested. The Gator offense got to hang on. Here's Jim Gallagher to call it. Receivers left and right. The quarterback, Wayne Pease. The give off goes to John L. Brown. Left side goes to the 22-yard line. 
Tony Ciccolo makes the stop on John L. Brown, the junior from Gainesville. So now it's second and seven, ball at the 23. 527 to play in the football game. You have to wonder if Powell, well, you wonder why he took Hugo out. He wasn't getting it done with Hugo, but he wasn't getting it done with Peace in the second half either, but now he's gonna try Peace. Here they come. He's got Pease once again. Pease yes, has sir. got two setbacks behind him and receivers left and right. Dropping the throw and he's got time. Throws that little swing pass out in the flat to Jones. Jones getting good coverage there from Scotty Nicholas and he goes out of bounds along the far sideline at the 24. Okay, they put the linebackers on that swing pass now. Let's watch that because that has been the bread and butter play. Watch Scott Nicholas here. He throws the swing pass. And Scotty is right there coming in. He saw the play developing and comes in to knock him out of bounds. Big play on the part of Scott Nicholas. Third and seven. Ball on the 23. 5-0-2 to play. Third down. 2018 lead. Receivers left and right. Wayne Pease is the quarterback. Pease dropping the throw. Everybody Nicholas covered. Nicolo. Out to Jones along the far sideline and Jones makes the grab along the far sideline for the first down for Florida. Phenomenal catch by James Jones from Pompano Beach, Florida. Watch him reach out, extend the one arm and make a one hand catch on the Wayne Peace bullet. Everybody was covered, this was the only open man. Peace drills it, look at that catch. Great effort on the part of James Jones. First and 10 at the 33 now for Florida. They want to play possession football, they want to keep on to this football and uh, right now Miami needs to get it back with 436 to play. Pease remains in at quarterback. Slot offense now to the right side, the wide side. The give off to John L. Brown. Sweeping hit on the far side. Brought down by Bob Nelson and Lester Williams. Nelson, number 91. Lester Williams, number 73. It'll be interesting to see what they do here, what they call the next play. They're running the same series. Uh, it looks like that was the same thing they did on first down last time. Ran uh, Jones out there to the one side. Then they came back with a couple of passes. Let's see what they do here. Second and nine. So far this afternoon, 60 passes have been thrown in this game. 32 by Miami, 28 by Florida. He's Second got a and nine, He's got to throw the ball here, Jim. Has to. The pressure's on That's right, right now. Slot offense, right side. Two setbacks behind. He gives. He gives off to Jones, and Jones is brought down. Miami's defense rises to the occasion, brings him down at the 35. Surprised at the call. It's going to set up another passing situation, third down. That means the defensive ends from Miami can just put their ears back and go after the quarterback, and you know the secondary is looking for pass all the way on this play. Jay Brophy. Jay Brophy out of Akron, Ohio. Hometown. My old hometown, great youngster. Played at Akron Bookdoll. Third and seven, ball on the 36-yard line. Slot offense right side for the Florida Gators. Big play coming up. Miami needs to get the football back. Rolling his piece. He throws the swing again. pass out from Spencer Jackson. Yes. Driven out of bounds here along the near sideline. Short of the first yes, down. Yes, sir. I don't think he's got it. That'll bring up fourth <laughs> down. Spencer Jackson makes the reception. He's a fine receiver. A little guy, 5'11", 170. Driven Does out of bounds along the near sideline here by Rod Bellinger. If you're Charlie Pell, do you gamble now? Do you go for it or do you kick it away? They're going to kick it. They're going to boot it. Absolutely. I don't see that they could do anything else. But nevertheless, if they get a first down, that clock is very important. They're going to have to give it back to the Canes now. Here goes Freddie Marion, big man back there right now. Freddie Marion going back, single deep man. Fourth and one at the 42, and Borakavich will kick for Florida. He boots it high. Oh, great hang time. Marion calls for the fair catch and catches it at the 30, falls forward at the 30-yard line, and the Canes take it over on the 30. So they're in pretty good field position right now. That was a 30-yard kick, and there was a call on that last play. It looks like it could be a call against the University of Florida, and we'll see whether Florida will take it or not. The flag was down. It looks like it's a holding call. It's a holding call, and it's against the Gators. So now the Canes have to make a decision whether they take it, the penalty, or whether they're going to take the football. I would say take the penalty. They need field position desperately with 2.58 left in the game. 
They've got a good steady man back there in Marion. They can put pressure on the punter. Let's see what Howard Schnellenberger decides to do. They're going to mark it off. He is going to take it. Take a 15-yard penalty, and Florida will be kicking from deep, and they will put the rush on I the would, punter. I would guess that they might, well, they might put a 10-man rush up there now and just put Freddie back there by himself. Boy, you talk about coming down to the last few minutes and being a tense football game. Two points separating these two great football teams. Florida leading 2018, less than three minutes. 2.58 left to play. Here goes Bora Cabbage. Bora Cabbage back to kick again. Marion back deep. Nine-man rush. He's standing on the 16-yard line, and he gets it away. And Freddie Marion is waiting for it, and he's got it at the 30. He turns up field. He's at the 35 and to the 36-yard line. So five yards better than where they were before. That's correct. And uh, they're at the 36-yard line right now, first and 10, 248 to play in the game. A 40-yard boot by Bora Cabbage. There's the sure-handed Freddie Marion, and he's a senior, grew up right down the street from the University of Florida in Gainesville. 6'3", 195 pounds. Fine athlete. Talk about playing for bragging rights. He's got to play for bragging rights when he goes home. Otherwise, he really hears about it from all the Florida Gators whenever he goes home. Otherwise, he'll find out that Thomas Wolf might have been right. <laughs> yeah, Mickey, you can never go home again. Receivers left and right. A split backfield now behind the quarterback, Rick, who drops the throw. Rick waits. Can't find anybody open. Hangs onto the football and carries it forward himself to the 45-yard line. Well, Very close to a first down. And that shows me a lot by Mark Rick. Not going to throw it up for grabs now. Can't afford to give it up here. So he hangs on to it. He pumps once. Now watch him. He pumps once. He sees his receiver open. He's going to let it go. And he says, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Watch him pump. He goes, oh, hold on to it. Then he sees a little opening. He says, let's go, Mark. Turn the wheels on. He does so. And he's met by a whole host of Florida tacklers. He's a bright young man, carries an average of about 3.8 in the School of Business Administration. Second and two on the 44-yard line now. Try to quarterback sneak. And uh, Mark is grilled right at the line as he tries that quarterback sneak. And so Glenn Myers makes the tackle for Florida's defense. He's a sophomore from Merrick, New York. Less than two minutes to play, and they have called a timeout on the field as Mark Rick comes across. He's going to talk with the offensive coordinator, Kim Helton, and with head coach Howard Snellenberger. Boy, that was a good call, calling a quarterback sneak there. That was one that might have gone for 78 yards straight up the middle, and uh, Glenn Myers, playing on the defense for the Gators, made a great play. He's out of Merrick, New York. Six feet, 251-pound sophomore. And my goodness, look over the Miami skyline. There's a rainbow. I wonder who that's for. Wonder where the pot of gold is. There's Earl Morrill. The rest of the uh, University of Miami coaching staff. We didn't name them all. Earl's the most recognizable face in that booth. See Gary C. Stevens, the receiver coach, uh, just a moment ago. And uh, also Mike Archer, who coaches the defensive backs. Third and less than a yard on the 45-yard line for the Miami Hurricanes. This is a big play coming up. You're looking at head coach Charlie Pell from the University <laughs> of Florida, and there is a very pensive University of Miami fan. Oh. Third and less than a yard. Here we go. Less than two minutes to play. Mark Rick brings the Miami Hurricanes to the Ooh. line. The Florida Gators dig in. Well, you got two plays to make a yard, really, here. Florida up 20 to 18. Waiting for the snap is Rick. And his give goes to Chris Hobbs, and I think he's got the first down. He's very close to it. Fernando Jackson makes the tackle for the Florida Gators. And I think he's very close to the first down. He's got the first down. I'm looking on the sidelines for number one, Danny Miller. He'll be ready. He'll Waiting for right the now. ball to get into position. Cam the Keens put it in position. They've got a minute 55 seconds to work with. They've got the ball on their own 46-yard line. They are going to ask for a measurement. They haven't given it to them yet. They want to take a look at it. Oh, he's got it. Yep. Easy. They got it. No doubt about it. The length of the football, a game of inches, as the coaches <laughs> like to say. You notice I said easy. Nothing to it. <laughs> a minute 55 to play at first down. For the Canes and the measurements stop the clock for a moment. And now we are back to action as Mark Rick takes the Hurricanes to the line. Rick dropping the throw, looks and throws a quick one out there, Woo! almost intercepted by Florida. Incomplete, it was intended for Smokey Roan coming out of the backfield. Tom Wigman was the man who broke up the pass for Florida. 
if the University of Miami should win this game, young Mr. Wigman, Tom Wigman, will wonder forever why he couldn't have held onto that football. Oh, did he want that one. Tough break for the young man from the University of Florida. Big break for the University of Miami Hurricanes. Here they come again. Second down. A minute 41 now. Second and 10 with the ball on the 46-yard line for the Hurricanes of Miami. Ricked again, dropping the throw. He's got the time. He throws out here for Belk, and it's incomplete along the near sideline. Ivory Curry, number 26, was there putting the pressure on Rocky Belk. Surprised they went with that play. I would look for him to go with a, a go play right down the middle rather than waiting for one of those plays on the sideline, waiting for the ball to get there. I think they would be going quick out of the backfield, dumping it over the middle there, but they're not doing it. New play in the game, number 85, Mark Cooper just coming out. Glenn Dennison, a tight end from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, where they produce some pitchers and catchers for football, has just gone in for Miami. Third and 10 on the 46. Split backfield behind Mark Rick. Rick drops the throw. Big play for Miami. Throws, and it is complete to Dennison. He's at the 40, and he's down to the 35-yard line, and inside the 35 to the 34. Woo! Big play for the University of Miami for Mark Rick. Glenn Dennison, the boy from Beaver Falls, 6'3", 210, and a sophomore. What an important reception that might turn out to be. Boy, you better believe it. A first down for the Canes with a minute 26 to go. There it is, and he takes it off oh, here. What a, what a great play, too, by the University of Florida. Again, Rick dropping to throw, looking, and he's throwing long for the end zone, going for Brodsky. He's got it. Oh, he dropped he it. Couldn't hang on it in the end zone. <laughs> Bruce Vaughn was the coverage man for the University of Florida Gators. I, st I started to say on the previous play, what a great defensive effort by Randy Clark. But uh, he couldn't bat the ball down, and Dennison came up with a catch, and then Brodsky goes for the bomb. Now Dennison is out, and Cooper is in for Miami, so... New set of plays in. Second down, 10. Ball on the 34 for the Canes. They're in Florida territory. Florida's up 20 to 18. This is a nail biter going down to the last second. A Mark minute. Rick brings the team to the line. A minute, 13 seconds. Waiting for the snap is Mark Rick. Two setbacks behind him. Rick gives off to Hobbs. Hobbs diagnosed and drilled right away at the 41-yard line. And lucky to hold on to the football. They came piling through there so fast. It was uh, Big Val Brown. Brown from Gainesville, a junior. Looked like he was in the huddle. We've got less than a minute seconds to go. now, counting. Mark Rick now at the line, dropping the throw. Throws for the end zone for Belk. Too long, too far. Too far for Mark Rick. Fourth down. 14. What do you do now? The Hurricanes of Miami. Ball on the 38-yard line. So we see if number one is going to get a shot at it. Boy, this is a big decision. A timeout now for the Hurricanes on fourth and 14 at the 38. Well, Jim, let's take a look at it. They're at the, they've got the ball spotted down right now at the 37-yard line. So you move it back, it'd be a 54-yard attempt. It's a long kick. Chris Dennis for the University of Miami kicked one for 54 in 1975 against Navy. Well, that's what you're looking at right here. And I don't think that Danny Miller has got the range, but he does have the wind at his back. So what do you call here? That's an important decision. And Howard Snellenberger is coming to that conclusion right now. He is I think there. they're going to go with number one. I do, too. On fourth and 14, I think that's the shot at this time. You've got to figure the adrenaline's pumping. You've got to go with your best shot. Making a 14-yard pass play now is just about, you know they're going to have five, six backs back there defensively to guard against it, put hardly any rush on, and they'll just be back there waiting. They've got to go with the field goal, I would think. Can Miller hit 54 yards? We may We're get guessing to find that's out. the range. It might be 53, but it's it's going to be an awesome field goal to win it if he can convert it. 45 There's the story seconds. right there. 20, 18, 45 seconds. Ball on the 38, fourth quarter. They're not going to go for the field goal. They're sending Mark Rick back in the ball game, and they're keeping Danny Miller on the sideline on fourth down. All fourth right. and 14, and this will be the big play of the afternoon. It's all gotten down to this. 20 to 18, and Miami, a gutsy call by Howard Snellenberger going for it on fourth and 14. No, nope. Here now they're going to go for the field goal. They're going to go for the field goal. They're bringing the offensive unit out, and coming into the ball game is number one, Danny Miller. 
Boy, oh boy. What a pressure pack situation to put on this little young man, 5'10", 172 pounds. He grew up in Clewiston, Florida. There are probably more people that are security guards at the Orange Bowl than live in Clewiston. A it's 55 a 55-yard yard attempt. Right on the Here button. we go. Waiting for the snap is LaBelle. Miller is the field goal kicker. There's the snap. His foot is into it. Is it going to make it? Yes! It's up! It's up! It's up! Now the longest field goal in Miami history, 55 yards, eclipsing the 54-yarder by Chris Dennis against Navy. Here it is again. There was never any doubt. He thrilled it. Right there, he drilled it, and it bounced right yes. inside the bar. Oh, incredible. What a field goal kick by Danny Miller that's going to give Miami a 21-20 lead with 40 seconds to play. And Bedlam in the Orange Bowl. They are going nuts here. And no wonder, what a tremendous kick by little Danny Miller from Clearston, Florida. 40 seconds remaining on the clock. Oh, back <laughs> oh, I love it. What a great football game we have seen this afternoon. I want to say this, you know, we are here, we've done the University of Miami games for a long time. We don't want to sound like we are, uh, you know, that we're pulling for one team. This is a game that neither team deserves to lose, doggone it. Now, you talk about the character of the Gator offense is going to be tested. Here comes Wayne Pease back out on the field. As soon as they get the ball back, they're going to try to get down into field goal position. Understand, a field goal will win it for them. They don't have to score a touchdown. All they got to do is get field position. So the pressure is on the Hurricanes defense, also on the offense. This is an honest football game, ladies and gentlemen. It's still anybody's game for the, for the grabbing, if they can grab it. But the Canes at this point, at this point, with 40 seconds left, have snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Now we'll see if the Gators can come back and do the same thing. We'll see what's going to happen in just a moment. Danny Miller is going to kick off. And Hampton is deep for the Florida Gators. There was a delay of game penalty against the Hurricanes because it, they swarmed onto the field after the field goal, and so that's why the kick is going to come from the 35-yard line. It cost Miami five yards. Miller moves to the ball and hits it high. And Not deep. Long. Hampton on the two. He's at the five. He's at the 10, the 15, and he is still on his feet and brought down at the 20-yard line. Just so the Canes accomplished one thing they wanted to do. The Gators do not accomplish something they wanted to do. The Gators wanted a good return. All they got was back to the 20. Now it's 80 yards for a touchdown. It's at least, oh, let's say 50 yards to get into field goal position. Well, and 34 seconds left. Old number 98, Tommy Harmon, predicted Miami would win 21 to 20. It's interesting to note that out of all of the one-point games, and I'll give you that stat in a moment, but I think the University of Florida. Here's Wayne Pease at the line. First and 10 for the Gators at the 20-yard line. Slot offense. They've got to come out of here throwing. Pease is dropping the throw now. And he throws out in the flat. And he's got his man, Malarkey, at the 32-yard line as the clock stops with 28 seconds to play. Miami has won three of the four Miami-Florida football games, which have been decided by a single point. The Gators won 7-6 in 47. Two years after UM had won by a similar score, the Hurricanes won 14-13 in 70, 22-21 in 78. Dropping back again as Pease throws out in the flat, and it is incomplete, incomplete along the far sideline. 18 seconds remaining on the clock. Spencer Jackson, 89, the intended receiver for Florida. James Boone, number 14, a junior from Miami, the coverage man. Wow. <laughs> Second and 10 for the Gators uh, at yes. the 32-yard line. Oh, what a football game it's been this afternoon. I, what did I say Orange Bowl. I don't want credit, but I said it could come down to the final few seconds and a big play in the final minute, and look what happened. Here it and is. It isn't over yet. 18 seconds to go. He's at the line. Sophomore from Lakeland, Florida. Very poised young man. 
slot offense for Florida. Pease dropping back. Miami defense trying to get in. Pease throws down the middle, and it is incomplete. Bounces off the shoulder pad of Scotty Nicholas, number 66, intended for Mike Malarkey. 11 the clock seconds with 11 remaining. Seconds to go. No flag on the play. The Hurricanes defensive unit playing it very safe back there. Lots of time for Pease. He throws right here. Well, there couldn't, have been a, there couldn't have been a penalty there. He never saw the ball coming. He just turned right around right. and it bounced right off Good. the Defensive shoulder coverage pads of Scotty Nicholas. Third and ten at the 32 for Florida. They're in their own territory, and Pease has got a slot offense. He's going to be sending everybody along on this one. You can count on that. Miami with a three-man pass rush, a pro-type rush. Dropping the throw is Pease. He can't find anybody open, having to hang on to the football. Now he throws, and it is complete here. Florida 21 to 20 a 59 yard field goal attempt now by Brian Clark of the University of Florida there's the snap and his foot is into it and it's on the way and it is short Miami wins 21 to 20 they have beaten the Gators what a great start for Howard Schnellenberger and the Canes in 1981 a near capacity crowd nearly 74,000 here in the Orange Bowl watch the Canes defeat arch rival Florida 21 to 20 on the strength of a 55 yard field goal by Danny Miller here's a look at it again as it falls short looks like it's going to go through but it is short almost impossible task for this young man he gave a great attempt the final score Miami 21 Florida 20 we'll be right back 